No man should have to go through this. No man should have to endure the pain. Men are taken out their home every day. Innocent men just like this one. 60% divorce rate took men out of their homes. College admission gender bias took this man out of his home. The gender pay gap took this man out of his home. These men are facing homelessness right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, we can save them. Please go online or call this number and join the Save a King Fund for Humanity for only $15 a month. For just 50 cents a day, you'll deliver emergency relief, passport, and life-saving support to these men who could be homeless without it. Don't wait. Pick up the phone now. No man should... Hey, everyone. Let me check my audio. Yeah, ew. All right. This should be really good audio now. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Thema Sento. Grab your coffee, water, tea, whatever you're drinking, go and get that. I am so excited you all are here with me. Um, Pretty in Black has been a member for 16 months. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, thank you all for being here. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Friday. And I actually want y'all to keep me on this. I need to get all of this done in two hours and 30 minutes. I also want to open the panel at some point because I do miss that a lot. Um, so and I, I need to be done in two hours and 30 minutes. Like we need to get Themis back on schedule as he prepare for the vacation. Um, in in Themis's case, it's mango juice, period. Uh, not going to happen. It's going to happen. It's, all right, let's, let's hurry up and get into it then. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. I so, so appreciate you all for being with me tonight. Um, as we've done before, let's start today by reading a comment. Um, I picked, a, I hand-selected a comment that I wanted us to read. Um, <clears throat> it's Friday. We can't get a full three hours. Um, let me test if we can get a full three hours. Uh does nine work? All right, good. Breathe in, breathe out, American oxygen. All right, <clears throat> let's start here. So we did a live stream with Monye and um, Melinda came up. So one of the comments said, Melinda made perfectly good sense. She was so right when she said that something was wrong about the way black women celebrated that black man hitting that woman on the head with the cheer. Him hitting her is not going to stop the constant betrayal from black men. Black women are still clearly attached with hopes that black men will choose her over Becky. There, was, there were so many going against Melinda in that chat. And it makes no sense given that Themis's audience is mostly women. Black women have so much more work to do to rid ourselves of this ignorance. Melinda was right. This has nothing to do with black women and is definitely not a win, shaking my head. And also, listen very closely to Monier. Uh, he wants black women to continue to be mules. Y'all can hold on to hope if you want, but black women who get it and act accordingly won't continue to be to be used. All right. So I just wanted to highlight this to point out that Melinda, who came up on Wednesday, was not completely by herself. And in fact, there were people who agreed with her. Um, and so I I don't have a response. I think Manye, uh, I think Manye is a hotep at heart. Uh, lovely, great person, in my opinion. Um, but... Um, I don't think he wants black women to mule, quote unquote. Um, 
but I won't defend him because I, I'm not always there when he's with a black woman. Uh, someone said, Demas, did you cut your hair? I did not cut my hair. It is in like this weird bun back here or whatever that is. Um, because it decided not to co cooperate on Wednesday and y'all told me you preferred it when it's not in my face. So now it's not in my face. So now you get to see, get to see. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's get started, because I do actually have to get through these topics. Um, please turn on slow mode. Wait, it, I don't feel like the chat is going quickly. If Drop a one if I should slow down the chat, and a two if it's fine. Drop Before we start the intro, before we actually get into the video, um, drop a one if I should slow it down, and a two if it's fine. All right. So it's two. All right, I'll watch. I'll keep watching the chat, and if it speeds up, then we'll we'll get to we'll do it. All right, <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. All right. So the first video. Wait, oh, let me thank you all for being here. Grab your coffee, water, tea. This is Saracy. I have Saracy tea. Uh, green is not my color. I know it's not my color. Um, I did my color match, and green was not a part of it. Um. So, I don't know why I'm wearing it, but it is what it is. That is Cersei, and so it's really bitter. Welcome, everyone. Let's go. Let's get into it. Yep. Get into it. All right. So, the first story of the day is going to be um, down low men. Um, we started on a journey last Friday where I told a story about what happened to me growing up. Um, and I think there is this idea that um, gay men uh, brings down the community. People have attacked me for being gay. People have... Um, sent me emails and DMs cursing me out, telling me that I am the problem in the Black community. I've heard it all. Um, and to everyone, I want to apologize that you don't have the right. <laughs> all right, let me not start off being petty. I do think there is a problem, though. I think there's a problem. Um, and I was talking to some people about whether or not it's anyone's responsibility to quote-unquote out someone who is gay or on the down low or in the closet or whatever the kids are saying now. And I don't think it's anyone's responsibility. I don't think you should be outing people. I think it's really dangerous to out people unless they're in a relationship and cheating. If you are cheating, just generally, this is a standard I have, where it, it feels like if someone is cheating, regardless regardless of if they're straight or gay or whatever, I think that is a breach of trust. And when that happens, people have the right to talk about it. And so if you are married, a married man, if you are dating a woman, for example, and you're cheating on her with anyone, I feel like she has the right to know. And if you're cheating on her with a man, I think she has the right to know. I think that it is important that we are all being honest and um, we should know. Then someone said, some women don't want, <laughs> some women don't want to know that their man is gay. <laughs> or bi. Let's not do no bi erasure. Or bi. And I'm like, I, I don't believe this. I don't believe that there are women who will intentionally ignore that their man is bi or whatever um, so that they can feel fulfilled or in a relationship. I usually believe that people want to know the truth. And then I heard stories. And these stories indicate that some of these women know. Um, but I'm not here to talk about the women who know because I don't really understand that psychology um, where like you know something and you just kind of ignore it don't understand that psychology, so I'm not about to get into it. So this instead is going to be a video that I got from Yanni's page. Yanni reposted something that I do want to play, um, and I want to talk a little bit about not too much. Um, so here we go. Team, if you looking super fine tonight, thank you. I appreciate that. 
Thank you. Um, pretty in black. All right. I read all of those. Thank you all. All right. So let's <clears throat> let's watch this together. I really want females to be weary of these down low men because they're getting weirder and weirder they're into some really weird fixations. And usually I'm for my boys. Like I stick up for them first before I stick up for anybody else. But I really want to talk to these women real quick because what I just got wind of is not cool. So I was on Grindr and if you don't know what Grindr is, Grindr is basically like a dating meetup hookup app for, of course, gay men. So whatever. I was talking to this dude and um actually me and him had words last year we've been kind of like talking on and off since like last year and he was like when we gonna finally meet when we gonna finally do this i'm like okay so when you free let's link up let's have a drink or whatever whatever he like oh yeah i'm free tonight what you up for i'm like i ain't doing shit what you got up so he was like yeah you should come over um but can you be quick i'm like what do you mean be quick and he's like well can you get here soon i'm like why are you like so pressed on time you got somewhere to be if that's the case let's just link up a whole different time so he then tells me he's like no nah, it ain't that it's just my girlfriend gonna get home from work very very soon i'm like bitch your girlfriend i'm like oh, you too so again a reminder me and him has been talking on and off since last year he has never mentioned that he had a girlfriend mind you we have pl we, we've made plans before to link up and never happen or whatever the case may be i knew that he was like some type of discreet which is not you know abnormal within our community but to be down low with the girlfriend i was like yeah i have to bow gracefully so i respectfully told him i was like yeah dude i'm not really into dudes that really be having girlfriends it's just not my thing um i mean i think you're cool but it's just not my thing so you know i i can't personally do it but y'all know me and my nosy ass so i had to ask more questions. i'm like so dude like do she know like do she know about what you got going on and of course he says no but that ain't the part that like really took me under so I'm talking to him and I'm asking him like, so if she doesn't know and you want someone to come over like right at the cusp of when she gets off work and she could possibly pull up. I said, so what if she does pull up and you have a dude over then what? He's like, well, that's kind of hot. I'm like, bitch, what? Like what? So I'm like, explain to me what fixation you get out of your girlfriend possibly catching you. He's like, well, I've had threesomes before and I've always told my homies to dress up as like thugs or homeboys. So if she was to come over while everything is going on, we can all like, like you know, we watching football or like being homies or whatever. But in real life, you know, we getting it down. And he told me that the possibility of getting caught is what makes the whole thrill of everything so exciting. So I want to let y'all girls know that these men are playing behind your backs <laughs> and they are counting on you possibly catching them for some type of climax with him and his homeboy. Y'all be safe out here. We, hey everyone, Alicia, Sober Bobo, Level Up Single Mom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday, everyone. Good to see you. Theme of this week drained me. Oh, well, thankfully, I changed the 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 stream from like this PowerPoint lecture foolishness that I was about to do and decided, yeah, no, let's go into the gutter. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so hey everyone, my thoughts on this. There is no foolproof way to protect yourself. I wish. I wish I could tell you what you need to do, what you should do, how you should engage. Uh, but the truth is, I don't know. And it it, it is really scary because what the thing that stood out to me, why I wanted to play this is, he said he told his boys, the, the guy who, who had the girlfriend, um, he told his boys to dress up like thugs and come over and they'll get it in or whatever that um, they're doing. And the woman won't know uh, because she thinks they're like, quote unquote, thugs, not just come over and we're boys. It's specifically to be like, quote unquote, thugs, because if you present that way, then no one will um, no one will feel like they need to question anything. Right. This tracks with some of the theories that have been coming out about how when you are overtly, quote unquote, masculine or when you become overtly homophobic, it, 
specifically when it's like a verbal homophobia and you beat the drum of homophobia. Look, I didn't say this, but apparently that is because you're probably attracted to... <laughs> Be careful. Again, I am not saying, I am not saying everyone who does this is homo, uh, uh, might have some kind of tendency. I don't know how to do this. No one knows how to decipher it. But it is interesting. If your man <laughs> is fixated on another man he think is gay, <laughs> your man might be gay. <laughs> Just let it go, sis. <laughs> let it go. Just, Just let it go. Cut him off. It's like, at some point, the focus should be on you, the woman, not some other random gay man. Also, like, the, the specific way in which he says, the, <laughs> the specific way in which he says, he tells them to dress up like thugs. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Y'all going to be real surprised. Y'all gonna be real surprised when you think your man is safe because he's so homophobic he could never. Uh, he's putting on a performance. <laughs> sorry. sorry. He's putting on a performance. And if my life has told me anything, it's... All right. That's what my life has told me. All right. <laughs> Girl... I have a lot of empathy. Let me let me say this. I have a lot of empathy. I think in the gay community there is this attraction to straight presenting men. Um, there is uh, a climate, men and women included, where it's hard to come out of the closet, and so uh, people don't feel comfortable, and then they feel like they have to. Uh, essentially, all the men are sphere for me. Uh, feel like they have to be with women and so they resent women. And then there are some who are like with women but also want to be with men. I don't know how that works. Don't ask me. But it's interesting though when specifically overtly homophobic people come out and like are they are caught doing something like a hip-hop artist come out and they're caught doing something. Or um the bully in high school who used to beat beat up the 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 gay guy in high school turns out to be gay. Like those, uh, they're not interesting and they're not funny. It's just like we see this time and time again, and it's just really, really sad. In any case, that's where I'ma leave that. If recidivism is an issue for him, let him go else. A period. If he gonna go back to prison, if every time he goes, <laughs> let me stop. Two L's in time out. Two L's. <sighs> this is actually not funny. It is actually really, really dangerous. Like it is really dangerous. Um, there is really nothing funny about the conversation that we are having right now. So in that case, um, let's continue because I do have more. So Igloo Azalea, <clears throat> Igloo Azalea, along with a bunch of other people, decided that they were going to ride to the judge and tell the judge how amazing of a guy Tory Lanez was. And I'm like, I don't think we're looking at the same guy, but I was sent the, the, the foolishness that Iggy Azalea wrote. So let's read it together because we, we literally have to read this together. Uh, H. Mills, thank you so much. I think you retracted your, your thing, but thank you. <clears throat> so let's see what Igloo had to say. All right. So she says, Dear Honorable Judge Harford, I am writing... Should I do, should I do my Australian accent? I'm not going to do it because she pretend to have a black accent. So let me not. Um, I'm writing to you in regards to a case in your court, Tory Lanez. My name is Iggy Azalea, and I've been a successful musician for the last decade. Okay, why you start the first sentence with a whole lie? See, this is the problem. This is actually a real problem. If, if in fact, you were talking to the judge, and you were writing to the judge, and the judge knows anything about you, why would I take anything you're saying in this letter um, to be truthful or meaningful, I would count this against Tory Lanez. 
In what world? In what universe? In what country? Because it's definitely not America. Were you a successful musician for the last decade? Girl, in... <laughs> Girl, why are you lying? You started off by my name is Iggy Azalea, and that's not your name, sis. So already you're lying. Successful musician, you're lying. For the last decade, you're lying. You have three good songs. And by good, I mean they were being played on the earwaves. After that, girl, no one knows who you are. I have sold over 65 million records. I should fact check this. Um, Sympathy and Paola. Throughout my career, had number one hits on the Billboard Hot 100 and Broken Records previously held by the Beatles. What record? My music has been nominated for six Grammys, but did you win any? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and I have multiple... A uh, multitude of other musician musical awards. Throughout my career, I've toured with some of the biggest acts in music from Beyonce. Being on the bus, cleaning off the bus is not touring with. You need to sit... All right. Whew. There's no folding chair around, so let me leave that alone. There is no... <laughs> Someone said... Someone said Iggy needs to meet her at the dock with a folding chair. <laughs> oh my God. Y'all need to stop this dock movement talking about Iggy need to meet you at the dock with a folding chair. <clears throat> from Beyonce to Pitbull, I've also collaborated with everyone from Britney Spears to Jennifer Lopez. In short, like yourself, I'm great at what I do, and I'm well respected by my peers. Now, Iggy, wait, give give us a second. Why are Iggy trying to convince the judge? Because she's not convincing us. We already know this. Why is Iggy trying to convince the judge that she's well respected in the music industry? Girl, who is this? Is wrong, but like who? I'd, I've never heard anyone said they respected Iggy's artistry. Just ever. This is Iggy. Is, uh, so we don't forget who we are talking about, because I think sometimes we might forget. So um, I just want to show you Iggy Azalea, Igloo, um, artistry. This is, this, is her, this is her performing. This is her artistry right here. You feel good? I feel fucking hot. <laughs> tire marks, tire marks. Finish line with the fire marks. When the relay starts to move on the way train. Master, she know the pants got spit like a pet. Her raptor, bash her, did like, go like that. Your faster, motorbike faster. He ain't gotta get a bitch, watch her rapture. White bitch, go back to go like a weed. Pay out your roof, top of the weed. When I win, when I win, I win, no, when I win. Got hoes on call, got hoes on call to come true, take a protocol, just damage it, that's my protocol. Just many Australians or small and no camera, I don't care who you are, no kind of rap, gotta give it to your roll. Bitch, one point, put a piece in your joint, gotta twist this beat, I'ma spray my joint, straight crack back, one till the clap, who knows, you know, rap, till you know, take your ass, you do it, and I'm rolling on, diggle, put motherfucking man, it's Iggy, not Jiggle. <laughs> Igloo really do need to stop all that lying. The, 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 the whole, you haven't even gotten to talking about Tory Lanes yet, and, you, and you're lying. So, Ma'am, you are not respected by your peers in the music industry. That is not a thing. Hi, TNT, for the replay crowd and algorithm. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Someone, Men, someone, please, someone... Someone please put mints in timeout. Thank you. The DJ drops are so extra. A period. She said protocols. Mm. So she started off by lying. Let's see if there's any truth left. Becoming successful is incredibly hard. I, I actually, this is true. Iggy would know that becoming successful is really hard. She's still trying to do it. To do and maintain successful is even, maintaining success is even harder. Yeah. She, I believe, I believe her on this because she's still trying to achieve and we, we don't even get to the maintaining bit yet. The music industry 
is not designed to empower artists, especially not women. You learn exactly. She dead right. The music industry is not designed to empower artists, especially not women. Right here, you should follow up with, for example, Megan the Stallion, who was a victim, did not get support in the hip hop industry. She was actually, people were trying to blackball her. People called her a liar, called her a snitch. So yeah, the music industry does not support women, i.e. Meg the Stallion, but I'm sure that's not what you're going to say, right? You learn to expect misogyny at every turn. Exactly. That is what Megan was experiencing. And thank you for reaffirming that for her. No matter how much you have personally achieve. Again, Megan, you were talking about the Grammy you didn't win. Let's talk about the one she did. Sadly, I've spent my entire career battling sexism and bad behavior behind the curtains. That's what she did. That's what she was battling with Tory Lanez. I do actually appreciate that part of the letter. One unfortunate consequence of that is I am a victim of abuse myself. I, mu I must make note of the things I have. Girl, get hooked on phonics. I'm going to read this. I will not be correcting your grammar. I will ignore the lack of apostrophe throughout this, uh, th this essay. <laughs> I will ignore the lack of punctuation. I won't go in on that because I want to hear what you're saying. Suffered through so that you understand definitively. I would not write to you on behalf of an abuser. All right. So you will not write on behalf of an abuser, therefore you are not writing on behalf of Tory Lanez. I think we probably misunderstood. She's definitely not writing about Tory Lanez because she said she would not write on behalf of an abuser, not a, an abuser of women, an abuser. We see Tory Lanez on video abusing people. We see him attacking people. We know this about Tory Lanez. Now he's been convicted, so we don't have to say allegedly. So I'm not sure what is happening here, but okay, go on. In fact, it's the very reason I felt it imperative I share my viewpoint as a woman in music in regard to Daystar Peterson. You are presiding over his case, and it would mean a great deal to me if you would please let me share with you why Tory Lanez is far from your average entitled rap star. All right, girl, period. Let's hear how Tory Lanez is not um, the entitled rap star. <clears throat> I believe in justice, and I know you do too. You've de dedicated your life's work to it, and I respect that deeply. That's, oh my God. Just, just oh girl, get hooked on phonics, in the, in the words of Sinji. That's why I, oh my God. How? How? Back to back, you just go mess it up. That is why I am taking my time to do this. You obviously did not take your time to do this. You obviously wrote this in less than 30 minutes. You obviously threw this together. You did not take your time to do this. If I were reading this as a judge, I would stop right here and go to the next one. Absolutely. You're not about to waste my time and you are trying to figure out what it is that you're trying to say. Because I know the person you are because I know the person you are understands in order to truly conclude what I feel. Girl, what are you saying here? You, I think she's saying, I know the person you are, judge, and you truly care about fairness in sentencing. I think that's what she's saying. I don't know what that sentence means. I'm just going to ignore it and move on. You need better understanding of who the person you are sentencing is at their core. All right, period. You know who Tory is at his core. Let's see who Tory is at his core. Justice Harford, I was elated when I saw your name in relation to this trial because you have a reputation of being a very fair judge. Lies. Lies. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with foolishness for me. You do not come and try to like 
sugarcoat your foolishness. The minute you try to quote unquote kiss my, you know what, in order for me to understand where you're coming from, you've lost me. Just come in, tell me what you got to tell me and move on. You telling me that you were excited when you saw me being the judge is going to annoy me because I'm going to know immediately that you have no idea who I am and you're literally just blowing gas up, you know what. This is smoke, not gas, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like what what are you doing i was elated when i saw your name how 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 you know judge harford I igloo igloo please tell me how you know judge harford please please tell me how you know him please not even him please tell me how you know them how you how you know this judge how you know any judge for that matter have you have you read about this judge have you met with this judge how do you know anything about this judge you just putting that in there just annoyed me if i were the judge and i saw this i would roll my eyes so hard so hard um in fact it's one of the reasons i was saddened day star had subpar legal counsel and did not take the stand at his own trial. Okay, this is this is such a dumb take, by the way, that, uh, as a sort of secondary matter. If the judge is the person you like and you think is fear and you've just been following this judge on Twitter, you know everything about this judge, so you were randomly excited that this was the judge overseeing the case, if he failed... You don't then move to the attorney was bad. That's not what you do. What you want to say is that the judge, what, however the judge presided over this case, must have been a problem. You then go to the legal counsel didn't do well. Let me know, Iggy, which law school you went to. Iglu, what law school did you go to? Please let me know what law school you go to and why why you believe that the judge, the legal counsel rather, not the judge, what was bad. Let me know why the lawyer was bad. Tell me why Tory Lane's lawyer was subpar and how you could have done better. He should have hired you to do it. He should he should have done high he should have hired you to do it. Talking about legal counsel was ineffective. Subpar legal counsel and did not take the stand. By the way, it is a good thing that he did not take that stand because you would be looking at perjury. <laughs> he would be looking <laughs> <laughs> he just be looking at perjury, girl. Like, it is... Look, even sometimes when people were, are innocent, they usually don't take the stand because of how difficult it is to figure out what is going to happen and you want to remove... You want to remove the defendant from being interrogated in certain kinds of ways in front of the jury. Um, and that's just kind of a general practice. We've all been frozen in fear before. I, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. You've been frozen on stage before and in front of the mic. I don't know what you're doing. Um, the fortunate side effect of his choice is he's being painted in the most unrecognizable way. I don't know what is behind that. To you, the jury, and the public. All right. Girl, hurry up. This is, this is too long. Tory Lanez is not the past you've heard about he is a gar girl he's a gar gardener he helps others bloom <laughs> any leniency you may afford him would be something you could be proud of. girl you see daystar tory has been helping me from the moment i met him i'm sure he has i am sure he has been helping you specifically igloo from the moment he met you i don't know why anyone would be helping you because rapping you cannot but apparently they apparently they're just propping you up and helping you you're gonna need more help than tory lanes because i promise you he has not helped that much you are still not relevant and you probably won't ever be relevant again our path crossed in 2018, while working in the same recording studio, although he was writing music for another artist, he took the initiative to come to my room mm -hmm, in his break time, in his period, and play song ideas, <laughs> and play song ideas he'd written for me too. All right, period. I don't know if he written the songs for you or if he played the song for you to listen. I don't know what you're saying here, but period. 
This resonated with me because it's highly unusual for someone who is already very successful to want to help others. All right, period. Music is competitive in that way. We know music is competitive, and you definitely and you definitely are trying to compete with Megan the Stallion. But that's neither here nor there. Who is knocking at my door? Give me two seconds. Let me give me two seconds. Sorry, y'all. Iggy was at my door. <laughs> Iggy pulled up. Girl, Iggy. Iggy. <laughs> my side. <clears throat> Iggy, Iggy pulled up. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Blah, blah, blah. Music is competitive in that way. And I think this is the reason why you're competing with Megan the Stallion by trying to free Tory Lanez. We've remained friends since, and what I've come to understand about Daystar is he's genuinely passionate about helping others. He will go out of his way to help someone he sees, even a glimmer of greatness inside. Although he is an incredible songwriter, it's my belief this is his true gift. By the way, I think he's, when she said he may, he will help anyone who has a glimmer, a glimmer of greatness, I think she's trying to talk about herself. But that's neither here nor there. She's fine. Seeing what could be and becoming the driving force to make it happen. He battled and overcame some incredible odds on his pathway to success success in many ways he's still battling that girl yeah what do you mean in many ways girl he is about to battle 10 years <laughs> wait like if I, in many ways he's still battling now this man is in prison he is definitely battling battling for those he has 10 problems and none of them includes you i think that's one of the reasons he always fights hard to elevate others one of my favorite examples of this is a story of how blah, 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 some assistant person. Uh, Tori was stopped at a red light with the windows down when a guy in his early 20s yelled at blah, blah from the sidewalk. In any case, he hired him. The shocking day star took the number, called the man back, hired the man. Still, he created an internship for the guy, even though he didn't have any job opening. He then uh, empowered the guy, made it a real job. I don't care. He creates space for others to be great. <clears throat> I deeply appreciate the person he is and have never witnessed him lose his temper or raise his voice at a woman. Well, you weren't there when he was telling her to dance with a gun out firing about five times. I don't know why you're... Like, I don't even understand what this is supposed to be. He's always been incredibly respectful of me. Okay, period. Good for you. And I refuse to believe that he'd do anything in malice, especially to a woman. Okay, well, he shot Megan the stallion so you don't have to believe it thankfully you are not the judge jury or the execute well there's no execute ah! i've witnessed him diffuse so many sticky situation with kindness and humor he is the last person to lose his cool girl did you see what he did with august alcina talking about he's the last person Tory Lanez is a menace by all accounts not all, but most accounts. I've never encountered this jealousy, rage-filled person he is accused of being. Okay, good. You've never experienced it. That's great for you. It means you've never been a victim of Tory Lanez. That's great. I know him to be someone who is always bursting with happiness. He not now. You should probably go visit him because I'm pretty sure he's not bursting with happiness right now. In the moment you want to cry, if you call Daystar, he will find a way to make you laugh. Try that right now. I dare you. Since Daystar remains in jail, many of his employees are left without work. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I think uh, it, the economy is actually kind of bad now. So that's unfortunate for people who work for him. 
I took it upon myself to hire. Now you know why, ig- girl. Why igloo line? I need to see these paperworks. I need to see these W forms. I need to see all these W forms. I'm not going to say she's lying, but I do need to see these W forms. I'm not about to believe you that you hired anyone. Not even going to go there about that. I don't believe that. All right. I took it upon myself to hire six of his staff members full time. I did this not only because they are great hardworking people, but so that they remain in a position to transition back into running his business when he's completed his sentences, sentence of 10 years. I'm doing all I can to make sure he's in a position to come home and get back to work. Period. You better, you better lift. You better cape. I hope that you will consider a sentence that allows for this to be transformational. Yep, 10 years. I think 10 years is going to be transformational and not life-destroying. No, it's not. It's called accountability. Look it up. Not only for Daystar, but his family. Nope, we don't care. I don't. We, no one cares about his family. So he should have cared about his family. He should have cared about his sons. He should have cared about all the countless others who depend on him and are committed to helping him reach his full potential. He should have cared about that. We don't retroactively, as a court, a justice system, think about that when we are doing punishment after he engaged in behavior that requires By law, this kind of punishment. No, absolutely not. Go sit somewhere with your foolishness. Someone was shot. You up here talking about, what about his children? What about her family? What about the people who cared about her? What about that? You're going to point a gun in her direction and shoot it. You're going to have a gun on probation. You Like, ugh. Like, even if you didn't get them for shooting at her, you had a gun where you shouldn't have that possession of a firearm. What do you mean? All these people jumping up and down, oh, he didn't shoot, he didn't shoot. He had a gun, why? And he's on probation. (sighs) These people lost their mind. If Toby is able to remain in the United States, no. He's a menace. After he has served his time, can you can you imagine if the judge had forgotten about like deportation and this letter reminded him? <laughs> this, the letter the letter reminded him that, that he, he should really discuss deportation. <laughs> it would employ him. I would employ. Period. He could go employ him. I would employ him without hesitation as an (laughs) executive producer on my next album. In fact, I already hired him for the job prior to his conviction. Okay, so she's out for herself. No one wants to work with her, and she got Tory Lanez, and so she's fighting to um, to, to get this album produced that no one is about to buy. I guarantee to you, how are you going to guarantee and be, all right, period, I guarantee to you he has significant income and work awaiting him upon release if you would kindly consider a sentence that does not require deportation. (laughs) A period. I have remained in close contact with him during his incarceration, and I am confident he has already gained positive insight in regard, oh my God, to this experience he leads a prior <laughs> girl why everyone why everyone praying y- y- y'all know how Tory Lanez really got really big on Instagram during the pandemic y'all remember what he was doing during the pandemic y'all remember what Tory Lanez was doing during the pandemic on Instagram if you don't know what he did, please look it up. I'm not about to play any of that degeneracy on here. But apparently behind bars, he has found God. So he's led prior, he, he leads prior, a prior circle nightly and is already empowering others during his time in, period. Okay, he can keep doing this. He probably should have done this nightly and daily because if not, it didn't seem to be working for him. But, but girl, period, everyone... I mean, that's probably when you should find God. It's just interesting that you engage in so much degeneracy and just found Jesus while you're in while you're in prison. 
A lot of people go through that, though, so it's fine. In fact, when we spoke last, last week, told me, girl, you definitely didn't proofread none of this, did you? Like, you literally didn't proofread any of this. In fact, when we spoke last week, told me, he, all right, girl, told me he's glad God put him in jail. All right, period. Yes, remorse. He's not remorseful. He put out a statement that he's not going to apologize. But he said he's glad he's in jail because, yes, because he knows that's where he should be after shooting that gun at that woman. How dare you? He said this in an uh, this is an opportunity to humble himself and soften his heart. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, a lot of other things that might happen, but but soften your heart. Period. You got ten years. When you come out, that heart is going to be soft, soft. Look at God. Ironic to hear one of the kindest person I know strive to become even softer. Good for him. He has ten years to be soft in his soft girl era. Period. I am not shocked. It, 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 oh my God. This, this is bothering me. It's, it is who he is. Watering and shining light on others until something better, beautiful grows. Thank you for taking the time to hear what I have to say in relation to Daystar character. Kind regards, Igloo. And this right here is probably why he got 10 years. That's probably that's probably why, that's probably why he got ten years. That right there, that right there is why he got ten years. Because if I was a judge and I read that foolishness, immediately, immediately, I'm moving the the minimum from nine to ten. <laughs> Immediately, you're not about to sit here and waste my time. Igloo, you can sit there and waste the hip-hop industry's time, but you're not about to waste mine. You're not about to play. I'm not allowing you to sit there and play in my face. So, period. Um, she is pearly of the rap world. <laughs> Her African, period. She said, release my African because he needs to come to work. The way I looked at, if I were the judge, I would roll my eyes so hard. The, the part where she said, I was so happy that you were the judge presiding over this because you are fear. Girl, how you know me? How you know me? Iggy, how you know me? Not how do you know me? No, absolutely not. How you know me? Absolutely not. So Iggy is out here and we're going to have to go back because I think we need to really appreciate this masterpiece that I played earlier. We're going to play it again. Because, period. Splash! You feel good? I feel fucking hot. <laughs> tire marks, tire marks. Finish line with fire marks. When the green lace starts to move on the way train. Master, she know the pants got spit like the pants. Her raptor, bench, her deal like go like that. Your fans, their motorbike fans, and you gotta get a bitch. Watch her raptor, white bitch, go up at the blow like a wing. Pay out your rooftop in the wing. When I win, when I win, I win, no, when I win. You got hoes on call, got hoes on call to come through, take a protocol, just damage it, that's my protocol. There's many Australians on source and no camera, I don't care who you are, no kind of rap, gotta give it to your role. Bitch, one point, when the pick me a joint, gotta twist this beat, I'ma spray my joint, straight crack back, one till the clap, clap, who knows, you know, 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 you Jesus. Yes. I you don't have a dog. I just This woman said it's Iggy, not Jigga. <laughs> I don't know who thought it was Jigga. I, I, don't, I don't know why she felt like she needed to end it like that. Because she really thought she killed that.
Girl, she really, she really, look, if you're speaking in tongues, if you're speaking in tongues, girl, let me know. Let me know, because I don't know what that was. I do not. <laughs> let me show you what it's giving. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I, I'm dead wrong for this. I know, I know, and it strike, is what and it strike, is. And strike, 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 until you have victory. For every enemy that is aligned against you, let there be that we would strike the ground, for you will give us victory, God. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. Done. For I hear victory, 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 victory in the quarters of heaven, in the quarters of heaven, victory, 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 victory. For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanda ata ata rata te de baka sanda ata ambo osa tata rite eke banda ata rite di di asha ta. For angels have even been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here in the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here from Africa, from South America. Angelic forces, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement, angelic reinforcement. Fika hata anda ata oro bata rata anda eke eke manda rasata. For I hear the sound of victory. 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 <laughs> so that was Igloo and her sister. She can't read the room. The judge said before he doesn't care about celebrity culture. So Igloo decides to open the letter by praising her. So, yeah, the self-aggrandizing bit of the letter just was, ew. She She's got bars, granola bars. <laughs> African angels said absolutely not. No, they, they were dispatched. They came, did what needed to be done, gave us some folded cheers and went home. <laughs> That's what happened, wait. Oh my God. I thought my side was okay. So, random, not, it's not a story, but I, you know, when you do, pull, when you're doing pull ups in the gym, I straighten my body and like try to turn to work out my core. And I think I ripped something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure something is ripped. Um, that's not great because I can't laugh at all. Every time I try to laugh, I hurt. And that means I hurt all day. Literally all day I'm hurting. They said pretty hurt, so that, that's why I'm always in pain. <laughs> Behind say it said pretty hurt, so that's why I'm always in pain. <laughs> I'm actually in pain. <sighs> Just throw my white sheets on, on me, Swain. Period. Uh, why couldn't they deport both of Right, girl, but they should have deported her for that letter. <clears throat> uh, all I heard was Holy Spirit activate, and they activate. The Lord moves in mysterious way. You call him, he come forth, and what we see is justice. <laughs> Uh, I see justice, so I'm period. All right. Those were... Please focus. I, I don't want to go through this with you today, camera. Uh, let's turn off the camera and let me talk while I turn off the camera and then turn it back on. Let me turn up. 
equality. Please, I need you to work. All right, there it is. Whew, a mess. All right, <clears throat> so now that we've warmed up, this was the hopefully fun part of the stream. Tori is living his soft girl life, the soft girl era for 10 years, um, probably more like seven years, but it is what it is. Justice was served. Megan the Stallion did what needed to be done. We already spoken about that. So let's get into uh, some nonsense. So I was scrolling, minding my business online because all I do is mind my business online. And a video came up. It's another podcast. It's another male podcast. But the video I'm about to watch is when they bring on a psychologist on because I critique them for not bringing on psychologists. They are newer. I th and this is the clip that sent me down a rabbit hole of degeneracy. And I'm going to play three short um, clips, but then I'm going to play a long form interview and we're going to talk. I'm going to open the panel, but how I'm going to do it is that one person can come on at a time. And so when you're up here, just let someone else come up because I won't remove you. You have to give grace to everyone. So come up when you feel like you have something to say and then leave so that other people can come up because only one person will share the screen with me and I won't tell you when to leave. Um, unless you take up too much space and then you're banned. <laughs> All right, so this is the... the daughter i don't know do you have, I a, have a daughter, daughter. Have you, a daughter. Have a, you don't have a daughter i don't know do you have a daughter would you would you would you tell your daughter like hey i need you to go to school i need you to get your degree because i don't want you to depend on a man no would i you tell, tell or would I, you push her to say hey be married do this do that like just depend on a man me basically. personally would, I, would I, you I, you your me personally i'm telling my daughter now at 13 the most important thing she can get in life is a good man more important than your degree, more you important than your daughter? fucking career, more important than any of that bullshit. Because how many fucking celebrities that you know that's rich, famous, got more money than you gonna ever get in your life, have more fame than you gonna ever get in your life, is more beautiful than you ever gonna be in your life, and they're miserable. They don't have a man. They can't keep a man. They're miserable. Look at uh, Taraji P. Henderson. She like 50 right now going on a fucking vacation trying to find what the fuck she said? Her inner peace. She did say she was unhappy. Exactly. She's famous you. and rich. Why are you unhappy? You know why? She has no fucking man because you were made to pair with a man. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much degrees you got. When you're old and lonely, sitting in that mansion and there's nobody there for you to love, take care of, and you sitting on Instagram seeing all these couples and posting all these fucking uh, uh, somebody's son memes because bitches are dating memes now. They're posting memes of okay. other couples on vacation going, oh, yeah, God going to see oh, yeah. this guy. Me and somebody's you son. Me and somebody's son. Somebody son. Okay. Yeah. That's what you really want. Okay. All this money don't mean shit if he's not there to share it with. Okay, so my hey, Amara. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Battle of the Sexes Part 4. No, I saw that. <clears throat> what if that man abuses your daughter? Because they're not thinking about that. Um, all right. So, he said that um, he's telling his 13-year-old daughter, he is, he is telling his 13-year-old daughter that the most important thing that she can have is a man. Period to your 13 year old daughter, and he says, You cannot be happy as a woman without a man because you're gonna ask yourself if you're rich, who you don't have anyone to take care of. So, apparently, you're, you can't be happy unless you have a man to take care of. I don't know why you're taking care of a man, but I said, You know what? <clears throat> I have given podcast bros, podcast men's a bad rep. I haven't engaged fully with their thing. People said I'm too feminine online. So that's why I apply. If you see my, my wrist being a little bit looser, uh, it's because I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to piss some people off. 
Because there are people like you. I feel like you're just doing this to do that. You don't have to apply a lip balm every two seconds. I feel like you're just doing it because you want to be more feminine. Because <laughs> the way y'all think you're going to come over here and police my masculinity is <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's funny. <laughs> I'm dead wrong. <laughs> Period. All right. I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I, I'm I'm dead wrong. I have no. I have no right. I, I should. Not. So I decided. You know what? Let me know. Someone said they hyper focus on you, girl. I was flattered. There is some people, I got sent a bunch of messages and I went on this person's, I want to call it a channel, but but period. Uh, whatever he's doing on YouTube, I went on it. And I was like, oh my God, like it is kind of flattering to think that like a couple years ago, no one knew who I was and now people are writing me love letters. Girl, you can call it what you want to call it. I read all of them as love letters. <laughs> What's his name? The show... Something the show parables, and he's usually cursing me out in his mind. But I read it as love letters. Like every single day, this man, the show parables. Should I pull it? No, I'm not going to pull it up. Actually, ignore his name. It's something parables, the show parables. If you go on his thing, in his community tab, his videos, one of the people in my uh, Discord reached out to me and sent it to me. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize there were like multiple people like writing love letters about me. And I was like, this is, I mean, this is sad for you because like, obviously you don't have li a life, but it, it's, I think I was flattered. I was like, oh, oh, he's calling me all kinds of names, but the anger with which you write that is just, I can see your passion. <laughs> I, I can see <laughs> I can, you can't really spell, you need to get hooked in phonics, but like I can see passion behind this and it is the effort that counts. Now I heard you are married. I heard this one is dating. This one was single. So that's fine. But I, if I were your wife, I would have a problem <laughs> or your girlfriend. I would have a problem with you writing so many love letters to a, a man you think is gay online. A period. <laughs> Now you go make your girlfriend hate me and I did nothing to her. That's the problem. This is the problem with the uh, download man. Like, these gay men will be minding their business, maybe would be close friends with your girlfriend, but because you are out here attacking them, they get suspicious. Now they're attacking the gay man and they could have been friend. In my experience, really secure women tend to be friends with gay men. Because if you believe that your man is gay, that's why you don't want no gay men around her. You know. You already... All right, let me stop. I'm on a tri I'm tripping. Ignore everything that... I... Girl! These men like... <laughs> that is something else. These men online writing me love letters. Mm. The insult spirit of Hathis is speaking through him from pod podcast past business as usual, period. <laughs> Not call a thing a thing, girl. Oof. I have never feel, felt more seen in my life. Thank you. I mean, it, I wish you would have just, I wish it was easier for people to come out and say, Themis, I actually really enjoy you and I like seeing you. And I don't know how to deal with that internally instead of like dragging me. Because like I can see through it, but a person who is not um, secure in themselves would probably take this as hate. But I know better. I know hate, and that is not hate. <laughs> Wait. I showed my mom. Let me leave that alone. I know hate, and that is not it. Anywho, so let me skip, because we, oh my God, we're an hour in. You, How are we an hour in? 
I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I have a bunch of other clips from them that I saw that I want to show, but I feel like I should just skip and go to the... Let me try to delete these three, and let's just watch two more and then go to the video. Ah, time is moving too quickly. Would y'all agree that a single man with no kids, that's successful, that's making the amount of money that you guys say, men? Time blindness. That I just experienced time blindness. Y'all cannot come for me, period. I stand with everyone who has suffered from time blindness because I too have suffered from time blindness. I just went through it. It should make. Them dating a single mom is a mistake. No, why is that? Okay, you're going to say no. I don't think it is either. Okay. No. Okay. I'm, I'm being very specific when I say this. Mm -hmm. it, women with kids serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, so the, the purpose is not single <laughs> successful guys no, with no them. kids that they want. Okay. Those guys, no, they shouldn't deal with women with kids because you're an idiot if you do because there's a woman half her age with no kids you can go start your own family with. Right. Why the fuck would you be kids? a stepdad? That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. I have two kids. By one woman or by seven? By yeah. one woman. I don't do multiple. And I got a vasectomy, so I ain't having no more baby mamas. So you are out here creating baby mothers, but you don't want men to date. Girl, let me leave this alone. Let's continue. Actually, let's just skip this one. I want to go to the conversation. No, My mom is a wife. Not, not, I, I forgot there was something in this. Let's just go to the conversation. So. I, instead of like saying, oh, these people are degenerate, and they don't have any ideas, they don't know how to talk, I decided, you know what I'm going to do? Tonight, we are going to listen to what someone said was their best podcast because they brought on um, a therapist on there. Um, no, he, she's a psychologist. So they brought on a psychologist. I watched some of it, not all of it. So let's watch it together. Um, let me speed this up because we're not about to sit here all day with this foolishness. Um, from the little bit I watched, it was not great. So let's watch it together because <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of issues. Besides, the great, we leading the way, man. It's it been a minute, man. It's it been a minute, man. It's good to see uh, all the viewers back. We got a special guest in the house. I'm gonna let her introduce herself. She is well educated. She has a deep. You know what? I'm gonna just let her introduce herself. I don't even wanna put the extra. Okay. Why you brought this woman on? Don't know her name. Don't know her credential. Don't know anything about her. You literally don't know anything about this woman that you're interviewing. But go off. Because she's just sitting there while you literally don't know how to introduce her because you know nothing about her. All right. This is fine. We can move past this. As a group, it's fine. We can give grace. You probably had a lot to do today to do the podcast, so you forgot to the, the name of the person you're supposed to introduce. Got it. They're going to say, hey, you're doing too much. Go ahead and let them know I'm what you're doing. I'm going to say I'm doing too much, too. But I'm Dr. Gloria Hudson. I am a clinical psychologist, and I have about five degrees, but Ooh. I think that my experience in the world probably gets above degrees, so... That's it, you know. Five degrees. Yeah. You want to? Uh, what you got degrees in? You want to break them down? You got to be proud of them. Oh yeah, I went to USC University of California, Trojan. That's it. Yeah, I was an English major. Then I went ahead and got a, a master's degree in clinical psych. Then I had went, decided I was going to go ahead and get a doctorate in clinical psych. But when you go and get a doctorate, they don't count the masters you already have. So I had to go back and get another master's and then the doctorate and then specialize in business. So there we are. You know what? This is this is real exciting for me because a lot of the people. All right. I don't know how you could hear that. I, man or woman, like that would be encouraging to me. I think the, the idea that your degrees don't matter and all that foolishness, it sucks because I can tell it's a deep sense of jealousy. I already know there is a deep sense of jealousy because there is absolutely no way someone should do all that and you don't feel like, you know what, that's actually kind of inspiring or good for you. Or just like, it, it is an amazing feat. Like agree with her, disagree with her. Didn't seem like I'm going to be agreeing with her today, but 
like like that that's good that that's amazing congrats to her i'm gonna give them what i'm gonna give her what they didn't congrats you you did that you gave what needed to be given you gave what needed to be gave feedback we get is people saying we need educated you need to get some educated females on you need to get some educated women on we we tired of the of the of the, <laughs> of the ratchet so this should be good this should be interesting and you you hit me up with um some interesting topics yes i kind of want to dive into that starting it off because that was uh i ain't gonna say it caught me left field but i kind of really didn't think about that angle and you know let's get into it all right well what you got for us right here so the first thing that i brought to your attention was is the the topic of toxic relationships and why men and women become addicted to toxic relationships and relationships i mean with it could be with a family member it could be with a friend it could be with someone that you're romantically involved a spouse so it's pretty versatile um toxicity is something that is so subjective that i've learned with various people various cultures everybody defines what they feel is poisonous to their life differently and that's what toxicity is something that is poisonous to your livelihood something that gets you off balance it doesn't you know elevate you that that tries to actually like take you back to like a negative part of yourself constantly on a daily basis. And so when you start to feel that you can't grow, that you're so stagnant with another human being, whether that's your mama, your daddy, your brother, your lover, your husband, your wife, whoever that is, you have to start to understand why. Why am I so addicted to these type of people? Because sometimes what a lot of us do, especially women, especially women, we will date the same guy with a different name. A hundred times. Yeah, we talk about that yeah, a lot. Say, yeah, <laughs> we, we talk about that a lot. <laughs> it's crazy. I got a question real quick, though. Do you feel like, you know how words tend to transcend, like, with the meanings over time? Do you feel like this toxic movement, now they're trying to use it in a positive light? Mm. I think they're trying to use it as a, as a, as a way to identify with a, a broader audience to attract, you know, more people, more followers, more... It's, it's, it's been a need. But when you can identify something specifically, it then attracts more people. So when you put a name to something, then they're like, oh, that's what that is. When he beat my ass, it's toxic. You didn't think it was toxic before. You just thought it was just illegal. You see what I'm saying? Like the terminology really means a lot to people because how you're raised and what your family has taught you, what you have seen in your own life, that's what resonates to a person. So when you put a, a, a simple name to something like toxic, Instead of using terms like, oh, that person's narcissistic, or that person has like a bipolar disorder, or this person is mentally ill. No one can identify with that. They need to know exactly what does that look like in their daily lives. So when you put toxicity to something, everybody wants to hashtag it. Oh, me, that's been me forever. But what do you do with toxicity if, if you've identified with it? Do you just like open arms, like congratulate it and give it a hug? Or do you say, I need to do something about it? But how do you do something about something if you don't, you know, recognize it as even a problem? And that's what's going on in our community that we think toxicity is cute. Well, it's, it's being marketed as a good thing for women, but a bad thing for men. Well, as far as like masculine, mm -hmm. being masculine, they marketed, deem that as uh, what they call it, toxic masculinity. Toxic, yeah. Like it's a bad thing. But This is not nitpicky. And it might seem nitpicky to you all, but I'm not being nitpicky. I hate, hate... When someone is talking and you are not listening, but you are only trying to push your agenda, right? If the idea of toxic is on the table, and she's explaining from what I've heard that toxic is an attempt to name kinds of behaviors that are bad and detrimental to you, and naming it is good. Toxic is a general idea that is too broad in her mind, and if we narrow in on the specific kind of behavior, we can better articulate what that is, and then we can fix it. Again, I won't be agreeing with her in a what minute, but this seems broad enough for everyone to understand. They are going to narrow it down, change it, not even narrow it down, change it to say toxic masculinity, but feminine, fem, women can be toxic and that's marketed as good. Okay, so you're creating a divide in toxicity, but she just explained that toxic generally is bad. This is a bad thing. A behavior that is toxic is not good. Now you are saying, well, why is it that women can be toxic and men can't be essentially? Why do you want to be toxic? 
And also, masculinity, as far as I'm concerned, is not considered bad. It is the idea of toxic masculinity. Now, what gets lumped into the category of toxic masculinity might be up for more debate and conversation, but quote-unquote toxic masculinity, if it's defined by men, for example, they should not want to do or engage in the behavior that is quote-unquote toxic. Yeah, he's conflating masculinity and toxic masculinity. I think, I don't know this for, for a fact, but it feels like it's just triggering him to his talking points as opposed to actually having a conversation with the human being in front of him. Just speak to the human being who is in front of you, speaking to you. Listen and respond based on what is being said, not what you think is happening. The government needs to require security and competence clearance for podcast mine. For real, April. For real. Thank you. But any other type of toxic behavior from the women community is kind of like, it's trendy. It's trendsetting. And I think that's where the addiction comes from. Is It's trendy. And like you said, we can hashtag this. We can, it's almost like they're selling it to us as a culture, as a positive thing, as we self-destructing. And right. like you said, people are getting addicted to it. But from your point of view as a psychologist... Mm -hmm. Mentally, how did, how were, according to your studies, mm -hmm. why do people get addicted to that? It is the reward system of dopamine. So dopamine is a natural chemical in the human brain. All human beings have dopamine, serotonin. There's 200 neurotransmitters. I'm not going to even go through all of that. But to make it simple, it is that good feeling chemical that makes you feel like you're on this natural high, right? And so dopamine is responsible for main things of learning and memory. So this is why, so I'm going to break it down. This is why dopamine is so critical when you are sexually active with other people. You think that you're in love with somebody because you're sharing this natural high, especially if the D is good. Right? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to just put it out there. Let's just say you met Joe and whatever, and all of a sudden, he, you know, he put it down. You just, you know, dopamine is to the level. That's just like an addict with a, a drug, like a methamphetamine or opiate or whatever. It's temporary, but the high is so high, but you get it naturally through a sexual encounters. So when you do that, dopamine memorizes in your brain. So that's why addicts on regular, like, you know, um, um, drugs, that's why you get addicted to wanting more and needing more. Same thing with human... Conversing with dunces is hazardous to one's... ...beings. When a human being provides you with that unmet need, which might be feeling of security, whatever it is, Dopamine makes you feel secure, makes you feel like you're motivated, makes you feel that you can do anything in the world in that moment. That's why, you know, Negroes will say something like some shit like I love you when they don't. In the middle of that encounter, it is because of the dopamine levels and no one can get away from it. So that is why I say women protect your womb. Mm. Do not give that shit up until you know who you are dealing with. They giving that shit away like hotcakes. Like, it's the thing to do. And, and with the dopamine, what people don't realize is it is a drug, really. Yes. Like, literally, it's like a drug. It like It's like as powerful as heroin, they say. Yeah. So you constantly chasing that new high. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the toxicity kind of goes out of control yeah. because it's like, all right, you done hit one level, right. and now you're not getting that same hit no more. Now you're going to more extreme degrees to get that hit, and it's just the culture. And what happens when somebody ghosts you? Oh, you my know, God. You know what I mean? Like, you get that high, right? You get that, that, that level of dopamine... You know, in that moment, he or she made you feel like invincible, like a Superman, superwoman, whatever you would like with. And then let's say that's why people start to call like, and I call it. <sighs> call you a hundred times in the fucking row. <laughs> exactly. They they going through the withdrawals. It's like a smoker coming down off their eyes. I'm serious. It's, yep. And I learned the hard way because I never understood that. Either. Like, why are some people able to just let people go and they don't have to call nobody for a while? Because they probably got a multiple outlets for their dopamine. You know I mean it doesn't have to be just people. You get dopamine from I get dopamine from this, the creative outlet. And sharing of minds is a dopamine effect here for myself. If you don't find healthy outlets to secrete dopamine, you will find yourself in that same rut of trying to be this fake ass CD girl from mm. that does not, it's not realistic. Talk it's, about it. it. It's not real. They even trying to change, I want a, hu a husband now. I don't know what husband you're gonna get. You're gonna get you a, a CD boy. That's what you're gonna get. Please tell him again, because when we say this shit, oh my God. Hey, somebody hit the cheer. Hold on, let me hit the cheer for that. Because when we say it, we are misogynistic. We don't like women. We got mother, mommy issues and all types of shit. So I'm glad that we have an educated woman on here basically saying the same things we've been saying. And, and as far as the um, 
Talk of, uh, damn, what was the word you just used? Not the dopamine, the what? The serotonin. Serotonin. Yeah, you, oh. you got to break that down because when we say women sleeping around is a bad thing because it'll make it harder to connect to a man due to the serotonin attaching you to every man that you sleep with. Right. Women, they say, don't understand. Yeah, it. no, all women say is that y'all don't like it when we do it. Because <laughs> 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 we, we like y'all now. That's the problem, though. They're trying to be too much like. That is not what she said. And she's not about to correct them. And that's the problem for me. That is not, you did not say only men have it or only women have it. And if you said that, you would be incorrect. While there will be higher levels in women in certain kinds of activity, it doesn't mean it's, ju it's not just as addictive for both women and men. Like, what do you mean? So saying, oh, this is why men can sleep around and women can absolutely not. That's not what was said. That is not what was said. You're interpreting what you want to interpret. But let me pause because I don't remember this part. I think I watched up to 20 minutes, so I should have heard this part. Let's hear what she says to this. Because if she does not correct this foolishness regarding men and women and that they both have just different levels depending on what is happening and actually some men have more, let's hear what she says. Because I'm annoyed already like men and thinking that that is cool, but not knowing how much is damaging they sell. Right. So serotonin is produced primarily within women. By, um, not, when I say women, biological women. Okay. Serotonin is the is a chemical that um, helps with your mood. It's, it is a reason why a lot of women become depressed because when we don't secrete enough of serotonin, and this is how it's depleted. When you, let's give an example. Let's say you're a single mom. Let's say you work in two jobs. Let's say that you then got to take care of the household by yourself. You have no balance of your life. Serotonin is depleted significantly within those types of uh, households and with those types of people. And when that happens, guess what? It's almost like a vampire needing that suck of blood for life. So they seek out somebody, usually, uh, usually women with a man, that they feel that they can suck the life out of them to support what they lack. If mm. that makes sense. I do make sense. That's mm. deep because I've seen women go and say that's what they do. Suck men dry, do certain things, and then Loki just leave. Pick me comes from all socioeconomic and academic demographics. The loudest people having these conversations are usually not in healthy partnerships. I think she's married. I don't know if it's healthy, but... I just don't understand. Like, I get sitting in front of people who you want to appease and not pushing back, but for them, for her to allow her words, because she's allowing this, she is allowing her words to be misconstrued and regurgitated in a very toxic way where she is not, she is specifically not speaking about men. She is only speaking about women, and they're using that to make assessment about men. So in the alternative, they're saying men can do that which the women can't do because of the serotonin she is describing, but not realizing that, well, can you explain that for men? Does it happen in men? How does it differ in men? Does that mean men can be out here sleeping around? Because that's what the... the it, that's what the question they should be asking is, but if they're just making the conclusion without asking the question, she should be correcting them. So I'm not blaming them for being degenerate. I'm blaming her for not correcting it because you are the expert being brought on. It is not spelled Sarah. It is spelled S-E-R-O-T-O-N-I-N. Uh, pick me. Oh, I just read that. <clears throat> he just learned these words and are really and are re already wearing them out. We are witnessing the transformation of a genetic rate to a TI in real life. Period. <laughs> Period. He just he just learned them and he's pretending like he's been using the, them all his life. Uh, please do not use "mammy pick me" or yeah in the chat. Your comment will be deleted and I will be timed. Uh, I will time you out if it continues. Leave them, leave, them, leave them through like that. Like, you know what right. I mean? Right, and they don't really understand why they're doing it. And that's why I think what attracted me to you guys' podcast is because I want, I think it's so important to have a variety of perspectives to make sure that our community, our Black community is represented on different levels. 
of intellect, of sociability, economically, physically, spiritually, and that we come from every, you know, realm of life. And that we understand what it is to be a single mom. I used to be one. Oh, understand okay. what it means to be homeless. I used to be one. Understand what it means to be abused. I used to be one. Understand those elements. But if you continue to embrace those elements as your identity, then that's the problem. But if we don't provide, and I hold myself accountable, if God provided me the outlet and the gift of what he's provided me, then I have the purpose of sharing exactly what I've been through not to be the Jesus or Messiah for anybody, but to to be that identification for somebody. <laughs> and that's it. And me, that's it. Look, let me ask you a question, because this, this was a question I seen, and I was like, damn, this, this is a good-ass question. You being a psychologist and you, you know, dealing with the mind, the inner workings of the mind, I want you to break this down. So it's as a parent, you disciplining your kid mm -hmm. is out of love, right? Like you correcting them and you showing them the right way, but you're doing it out of love, even though it may hurt them at the moment. Right. But if a man it was to discipline his wife before before we hear that 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 actual degeneracy, before we hear this disciplining your wife foolishness, I am mad that she, in explaining dopamine, and when she's explaining it, she pointed out that this is what allows men to say I love you in the moment, even though they don't mean it, right? So it does affect men. The fact that he, the, these two men just said to her, oh, yeah, by the way, um, this is why women can sleep around like men. You just point out that it affects men too. Why are you letting this go? Why are why? All right, let's go back because they're gonna ask this degenerate question about disciplining women. And from this is where I knew I was gonna watch this, this by the way. This right here is where I was like, yeah, no, we have to watch this. All right. Listen to how she specifically answers the question about disciplining your wife, like your child. All right. And the gift of what he's provided me, then I have the purpose of sharing exactly what I've been through, not to be the Jesus or Messiah for anybody, but to, to be that identification for somebody. <laughs> and that's it. Let and me, that's it. Look, let me ask you a question, because this, this was a question I seen, and I was like, damn, this, this is a good-ass question. You being a psychologist and you, you know, dealing with the mind, the inner workings of the mind, I want you to break this down. So it's as a parent, you disciplining your kid mm -hmm. is out of love. Right, like you correcting them and you showing them the right way, but you're doing it out of love, even though it may hurt them at the moment. Right. But if a man it was to discipline his wife, it would be considered abuse. What is the difference, or why is it a difference if he's doing it out of love? Like if she's out of line and he, you know, discipline her the way you would discipline a kid. Mm -hmm. Why is one, oh, this is discipline, but this one is abuse? Well, I'm gonna stop you right there, ma'am. I'm going to stop you right there in your tracks. Your very next word should be some profanity aimed at them, and you should walk off. That is the only acceptable answer to a dumb question like that. Why is it abused when you attempt to discipline your wife, but when you discipline your child, it's not? Please explain to me, because you... All right. Whew. If you're going to speak and attempt to continue this conversation, you need to ask, what do you mean by discipline? Because the discipline I am thinking about cannot be the discipline that you are talking about. Because discipline means the practice of training people to obey rules or code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. So I need you to now ask them what they mean by discipline. Like, I need you to ask that. I don't need you to be answering for them. And if I remember correctly, what she does is try to reframe discipline in the way that she sees it, and it doesn't actually mean this bad... Let's hear it, because this is degenerate. And if, if that's what she does, if that's what I remember her doing, she's just as degenerate as the rest of them. The entire table would be degenerate. Like, that's not okay. How are you going to try to discipline a grown person that you're, you're, you're dating or married to? Discipline yourself. <laughs> this is the problem.
So you have to understand that everyone, every woman is going to perceive what you said differently. They might, if they have not seen that in their own lives, if the only discipline that they've ever seen in their lives from a man is physical abuse, that's how they're interpreting what you're saying. Now, if when you said it, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that I need him to keep me on check. Like when my husband brought me here, I need to make sure that if I'm doing something that is not in alignment with my own purpose and my goal, he knows what my purpose and my goals are because I make them very clear to him. That is his duty to make sure that I'm in alignment with that. I have already said, and I have communicated very clearly, this is what I want to do. I want to come here today, but I need you for this, this, and this. He made himself available, right? Despite whatever he had to do. Oh, I was mad at her. I'm no longer mad at her. I am no longer mad at her. What she just described is she gives her husband orders. She do not think highly of these people. She she said <laughs> nothing she just described was discipline. What she just described was her giving her husband orders. That's what she just described. She said, I told my husband that I need him to do this, this. <laughs> Wait, someone said she might be a submissive provider. It is sounding like that. I'm going to replay this. Because she just said, she said, yeah, I need my husband to keep me in check. And that made me frown. I was like, what do you mean keep you in check? But then she goes on and she says, yeah, like when I have my ideas, when I communicate my ideas, when I have my plan, when I tell him to do this, this, and this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't remember if someone said it's giving submissive provider. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, yes. Thought this would intellectually drag them, yawn, right? No, yawn too. Very much yawn. I like how when the topic of toxic relationship comes up on the platform, they jump straight to hypersexuality and completely skip DV. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why would they do that? They would not talk about it. But let's go back. Uh, Thebeth, how do you use the? Uh, how do you use to be a single mother? I mean, by getting married, I guess. <laughs> Someone said he's her manager. It's giving Wendy Williams. Wait, let's. Do <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm not even. I'm not even mad. Wait, let's hear this again. Whew. No, it's not like he's a sec. Let me look. Difference if he's doing it out of love, like if she's out of line and he, you know, discipline her the way you would discipline a kid. Mm -hmm. Why is one, oh, this is discipline, but this one is abuse? Well, you have to understand that everyone, every woman is going to perceive what you said differently. They might, if they have not seen that in their own lives, if the only discipline that they've ever seen in their lives from a man is physical abuse, that's how they're interpreting what you're saying. Now, if when you said it, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that I need him to keep me on check. Like when my husband brought me here, I need to make sure that if I'm doing something that is not in alignment with my own purpose and my goal, he knows what my purpose and my goals are because I make them very clear to him. That is his duty to make sure that I'm in alignment with that. I have already said and I have communicated very clearly. She flipped the script. I don't know if she intentionally did this. I don't know if she's being honest because she seemed to want to be on their side. But her life is like not what they're talking about. She literally says his job is to make sure that I am going in accordance to my plan and what I want out of period. Period. That is his job. <laughs> 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 Someone said he's to help me. <laughs> Look, it is what it is. That's what she said. I didn't say it. Let's see if they picked it up because they're the general talking about disciplining. Let, let's see if they picked it up. This is what I want to do. I want to come here today, but I need you for this, this, and this. He made himself available, right? Despite whatever he had to do. But 
if if I was out of line, if I came in here not prepared, if I he would tell me like, why are you in here? And you you're not even prepared. You ain't got no notes. You ain't got nothing. Mm. He would tell me, but and then I'm not gonna sound me perm. Oh, I might get an attitude like if I didn't wake up early enough in the morning. As in another example, um, you know, you said you want to lose weight or you want to get better uh, back back in shape. You didn't wake up. He called me this past week. He called me a PT, part time. You know, I said, part time? What are you talking about? He said, you told me that you wanted to like get my muscles here and get this and get back how you used to be back in the day, but you PT. You still sleep at eight. You playing with the gang, yeah. But he was there. And I was like, you know what? I said, can you stop playing? Yeah, no, 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 no. She is trying to appease them, but what she's describing. <laughs> Someone said, <laughs> someone said she wifed him. I don't care what she's trying to do. Through her body language and the way she's talking, she sounds like she's in agreement with them. But if you listen to what she's actually saying, the kind of relationship she's having, I bet you a million dollars she's the like the main provider in the relationship. Because it it, it sounds like He's like the assistant, but they'll say you're my manager to make him feel better about like assisting because of his masculinity. But what she just explained, like he knows his duty. I give him his job. He keeps me in track with what I told him I want to do. So if I'm telling you this is my plan and you're keeping me in track with my plan because I told you to do it, a period. I mean, I like this. I, just, I Let me stop. I don't know if I like this yet. I don't think she's intentionally trying to play in their face. Let me say that. I don't think she's intentionally trying to play in their face. I think she's trying to be honest, one, but also be sort of cordial and be on their side. I think she wants to be on their side. But her life, the way she's describing it, doesn't sound like she's the sweet submissive. <laughs> Remember, they're talking about discipline. They're saying how men should discipline women, essentially, right? And he's saying, she's saying, yeah, I tell him what to do. He keeps me in track with what I told him I want to do. He makes himself available when I need him to do this, this, and that. Girl, she didn't even answer the discipline question. She said, when you say discipline to me, what I hear is how I operate with <laughs> A period. I don't know what y'all heard. That's what I heard. Why you want fucking PT? Because he do it in front of everybody at the gym. She PT. I was like, all right, she PT. So discipline means something differently to me. It's something that I expect. And even though it might be uncomfortable, I know when something is not healthy, a healthy type of discipline. So do you, so do you agree or disagree that it isn't a man's right to discipline his wife when needed. Of be. course. Because I, I think we need to have a healthier description of discipline because automatically, like you said, people are going to think about the worst possible case scenario right. or what they've been through personally as far as abuse goes. Like, I do, however, need her to explain to them that they need to define what discipline is. You can cut blank. Just say, oh my God, yes, discipline. No, 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 no. You don't get to say that. They need to define what discipline is. I don't know how you are a licensed professional on someone's podcast talking about, yes, men should be able to discipline their women. You better say women should be able to discipline their men. Also, if discipline is the way you are talking about, because absolutely not, I am 110% certain by the way, this is where I stopped. I am 110% certain that the discipline they're talking about isn't serving their wife. I am 110% certain that the discipline these two men are talking about has nothing to do with serving their wife. Uh, so she got her five degrees so he, he can rest in his femininity and answer the, the, the purpose she gave to him, <laughs> micromanaging her schedule. <laughs> Stop. You know, some of, these, some of these men have to be at home and take care of the children, and I think that's, that's fine. Parenting is the hardest job, so they should be able to do it.
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to stop doing that. Like, you'll be a parent and your kid will be out of line and you'll yell at the kid, you'll spank the kid, but never in your mind do you think it's abuse. But, but a man raising his voice at a woman in 2023 is considered abuse. So you should be able to treat the woman like your child and you're talking about yelling at the child and spanking the child. Ma'am, psychologist lady, please, please, please tell me you say something here. Please tell me you correct them here. Please, 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 in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, please tell me you said something. Please. All right, let's hear it. Uh, they will tell you a man lying to a woman is abuse or you're gaslighting like all of these made up fucking terms like right. you know what i'm saying just I, I don't know i think we need to we need to draw the line there because it's getting right. kind of it's getting kind of um it's like coming a wobbler where you can almost not communicate with your own wife yeah. out of fear of damn am i abusing her is she gonna say i'm abusing her like i don't know how you feel about that sorry. man okay if you don't have the emotional intelligence to figure out if what you're doing is abusive, maybe you should be thinking about whether or not what you're doing is abusive. That's a good thing. If, 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 if your engagement with people would potentially lead them to say that you're abusive, it should mean that you consider the way that you're talking. Girl, what are you talking about on this podcast? Oh, that man is there. He hasn't spoken yet. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, Shade, she peeped he was unprepared too, LOL. I need, not I'm about to unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, why would you be subscribed to them, Kenny? Please let me know why you would be subscribed to them. Let me play it. <laughs> as far as mental abuse, and I don't think yelling and things like that, that's naturally gonna, gonna happen. It just depends on how you look at relationships. Like I say, I look at them different. I look at them from a spiritual standpoint. So usually, when it's conflict or certain things going on, it's going to be a breakthrough somewhere in there to where a point where y'all should better grow from that and learn why this is happening. It's not just arguments and things building up for no reason. It's something below the surface. Right. So I just think it depends on who you are as a person, you and your woman. Y'all got to learn each other, know each other. A lot of people think they deal with women or men the same way as they did every relationship. So a lot of those things is different. Like she just said, her man could tell her certain things, but another woman might take that as the way I don't care what any of them are saying right now is saying, you don't get, when you ask compound questions, I do this intentionally because when you do it, you, the other person on the other end can literally just answer whichever part of this, the question they want because there are so many questions, right? They're doing that to her in their responses. It's too many. So she can choose to not engage with child abuse and wanting to spank your woman like you spank your child. She can choose not to, but I hope with everything in me that she don't. I hope that she addresses this. This is annoying me. Uh, Akiba J, welcome to the membership. This is my membership dance. All right. Welcome. Thank you. It's being attacked in the gym. You know what I mean? Mm. When he like, oh, you this, you that. But he's trying to motivate her versus somebody else can take it. Well, I'm, I'm gone. I ain't working out with you. Because right? <laughs> they ain't right. feelings about something by him telling her about herself or trying to sharpen her because he knows his, his wife. That's right. So That's just, why you can't yeah. include everybody in your element. Because if you are clear about your vision and uh, where you're trying to go in your own relationship, and I think that's what's lacking. When people can't be comfortable and no man. Clear, clear about where they want to go. What I want to do. Do I want to get married? Is do I want to have children? People are so afraid to be real with each other, and that's a that is like one of the biggest problems. If you're not clear about yourself, oh, la lovely lady has been a member for eleven months. Love you, Themis. Love you right on back. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm gonna go find a commercial so we can go to a commercial break in a moment. I heard you. I'll, I'm looking and what you want for yourself, then how do you expect somebody else to be clear about you? Mm. A lot of people want people to be so clear and just like, you know, consistent. But it's like when you ask yourself the same question, are you consistent? A, ma a man is the easiest, easiest person, easiest human being. I'm going to use the word train. He does exactly what you allow him to do. That's point blank bottom line. That is it. 
When I mean it. Okay, what you mean by that? Because you got to break it. She said, a man is the easiest thing in the world to train. After talking about how he gives the man due... Look, I feel like this is Prince Sala's um, talking point. <laughs> I <laughs> well, let's see if they agree with this. Let's see if they agree with this because period. Yeah, period. I, th I think she is literally still thinking that she is in one accord. Like, they, they're, they're on one accord. Like, I think she thinks. All right. You gotta break that when down because you, 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 you lost me with that allow. You're not allowing yeah. me to do a damn thing. So, you gotta no. break that down. And what I mean, and, and it's not something that I mean as offensive, I mean. Just like if I say I don't want, it could be something simple as I don't want the one sitting right next to me. Let's say someone comes sit next to me and I allow you to do it. My ba now my boundaries are really like flawed. You don't understand now. It's not clear. So when I say I don't want someone sitting right here next to me, and that's and I, if I decide to get up, I can't force somebody to leave next to me. So then if I'm disciplined and if I don't want someone sitting next to me, then then I have to make the choice and maybe if I'm uncomfortable, I have to get up and leave. Are you I, speaking as a man or your man? So no, no, no. So I'm speaking that just, just as a metaphor, uh -huh. as a metaphor, because sometimes we'll say things that we want, but then we'll accept what we don't want. That makes sense? Yeah, we'll no, it, say, do, it do make I mean? sense. But then I, at the end of the day, I think a lot of women don't know what they want. And I believe that Nothing's going to last if women are not accord with the man that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. They keep trying to change the nature of men and thinking that, well, if a man makes himself clear about something, then they'll, they'll go in their mind like, well, I'm going to create him like this. And eventually, over time, right. I'm going to get him to do this. Then when, that man, when that man never becomes what they want, then that's the conflict or these things is coming in. Right. But and you just you... proved my point, what I was just saying. Yeah. I don't. That's why I said men are so simple. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. <laughs> oh my god she said men are so simple she is trying to pander to them she really is but I don't know if she know what she actually is saying like they're easy to train they're so simple I think you don't think very highly of them <laughs> <laughs> Next, she's probably going to say they can change. She probably, you want to know why? She probably listening to Prince Sala and not realizing <laughs> that she's internalizing this and then saying it. Okay, this is a whole drag. This is a, this is a whole entire drag. And if she were telling it to me, I would be on the floor laughing. Because period. Because period. <laughs> The funny thing is, she is unintentionally doing this. She is not trying to drag them. That's the part that's like very funny to me. Hey, Jean, welcome to the membership. Thank you so, so much. Um, again, lovely lady, thank you. I appreciate you for being here for 11 months. Uh, H. Mill says, these types of women are scary and dangerous. Five degrees, but won't call out child abuse. I actually am mad about the the, the whole abuse conversation that she's not saying anything about it. Like, she just kind of let it go. I don't like that. She must have gotten a minor in <laughs> dusty geese if she can understand what they're saying. Look, <clears throat> 
a woman say what you mean, mean what you say. He will follow what you say or do. Most most men who are men, I'm talking about little boys, I'm talking about men, they will not break. And that's the difference. That's a whole other topic. They will not break like your wall if you're not allowing the, the wall to collapse. Okay, well, you said. Okay, these two things are annoying. On one hand, she's saying women are the leaders and men follow. I don't know what they heard. I I don't know what they're hearing. I don't know why they are not up in arms. Maybe it's the way she's presenting it to them. But she definitely saying they're the followers and women are the leaders. I don't care. You are not about to convince me that's not what she said. That is definitely, that is definitely what she said. Y'all follow, we lead. You give it, we give instructions, you follow. That is what she said. Sounds like Prince Sola to me. I don't know why they're mad at Prince Sola. If they agree with her, they also agree with her. So period, uh, one accord. It looks like we're going somewhere in the community. Apparently everyone is in agreement. However, to say that a man will not intrude on your boundaries if you don't let them, I think is hugely problematic and dangerous rhetoric. To say that in this kind of culture where we get RAPE and DV and abuse generally, SAs, I don't think that is a great thing to say. I don't know why you would say it. I think people should have their boundaries, but to pretend like other people uh, don't cross your boundaries, don't engage with you in really dangerous ways is hugely problematic because then it becomes kind of blaming the victim, and I don't stand for that. So I do not like this at all. Um, she's proving Cynthia's point about black male worship. Black male worship, um, black women don't think much about their preferences. They're simple. Yeah, no, 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 no. So I don't use the phrase black male worshiper just generally, unless I'm thinking, trying to make it like a, a, a theory, but I understand it. And I was trying to do a video on it, but I didn't think it was fair for me to break down black male worship in my understanding because I think it's in. Thinji's work phrase, and I think she would probably do a better. If you're here, Thinji, please do a video breaking down what black male worship is. Um, but I think that would be a great video where it comes from and all of that. I don't think people who engage in this behavior can ever um, respect the people they're quote unquote worshiping because the behavior seems counterintuitive to supporting men you believe are strong leaders. Like, if you believe men are strong leaders, you don't think you have to be a 50-50 provider. You wouldn't think that you have to raise them up and speak life into them. You would not have to think you will step out in front of them. You wouldn't do things like that. So it seems oddly counterintuitive to what it actually says. So I actually agree with this, the architect. You've been a member for 19 months. Whew. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think Sober Bobo has been here the longest with 33 months. Um, so I appreciate that. I'm convinced she got her degrees from Brigham. <laughs> Carmel Butter in timeout. Um, they're having two different... Con yeah. They're definitely having two different convo. They're definitely... Because she definitely said, these men are followers and women are leaders. That's what she said. And I don't know what they heard. I, I really don't know what they heard. She said, you give them orders. They're simple. Like, let's hear. Say men are simple. That would mean women Black are complicated? Girls are complicated. Women aren't. When you are clear, when I mean by that, I separate the two to make it simple for everybody else in this world listening. Girls are still trying to figure out themselves. Right? When you think of a girl, she's still going through development. She's still trying to understand herself mentally. What does she want out of life? Those kind of things. Now, when I say a woman, I say that she understands who she is. She, even if that's not the greatest thing at the moment, maybe she is not where she wants to be, but she's honest where she is. Okay, see that that's where we're gonna clash a little bit because I disagree. I with, believe with I, uh, I believe women are complicated, and I believe oh, okay. when you talk about the masculine versus the feminine, mm. and you're talking about well, men are simple or, or men are, are less complicated. It's like yeah, men, we got a program, we get on our track, we got our purpose, and it's like. Mm -hmm. We going straight. We on that track. We not trying to derail the train. Right. The feminine operates in chaos, which is why 
in my opinion, I say women need guidance because anytime women not him trying to flip it, talking about women need guidance. No, that's not what she said. That is not what she said. You tried it. Let's hear how she re 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 responds to this. Have no guidance or they're granted freedom or quote unquote liberated. They result to horrorism, mm -hmm. self-destruction, financial catastrophe, and sexual, sexual promiscuity. It's like whenever a woman is granted freedom, if we just sit back and watch, they just self-destruct. And it's like, well, how can you say that? Just look at our community now. Women are the freest they've ever been, and they're the most out of control. They're the most... It's like they lawless about these things. It, 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 it's like the morals just don't exist no more. But if you compare it to the time where they were under the rule of men, they weren't like that. They were more in check. And, and it's like, um, I was talking, I was on another podcast the other day. Shout out my boy Five Stacks, by the way. Dude asked me, he was like, you know, man, I just, I just don't get it. Like, how do you deal with your woman when everything is going smooth and out of the blue? She just stirs up some shit like for no reason. It's like you come home, you just want pee. Women were better when they were under control because now they're out of control. When they have freedom, they they do all kinds of stuff. Pause. It sounds to me that the women you want do things you don't want them to do. And the women you that do things you want them to do, you don't want those women. And I say that because women with their freedom, as you put it, can do whatever they want to do so long as it is legal. And they are doing it. There are women who engage in this and that kind of behavior. Why don't you choose the... Why are you preoccupied with the women who are doing the things that you don't like when there are other women that you could be with? That's my first issue. When you're talking about they were better under control, is there any point in history where women are doing better than they're being than they're doing now is there any point in history that women collectively are doing better e let's use economically as the marker is there any point in history where women as a collective are doing financially better than they are doing now were they doing financially better at any point in history than they are doing currently if you have that and that is true please let me know oh please let me know I had a conversation about progress a long time ago on the podcast, and I was trying to critique progress. This is not what I mean by that. This is some other stuff. Like, what do you mean we should wheel back? Wheel back what? And under, under whose control? Because if we're talking about the United States, under whose control were women? Because they weren't under your control. Let's be clear. Are you talking about slavery as when people didn't have freedom? Is that where you were? Or do you mean freedom of movement during Jim Crow? No, no, please, please elaborate. I, see, this is the problem I have with the, the, the whoever this person is. She's not about to sit there and ask them clarifying questions. I need her to ask clarifying questions. Before we, she asks clarifying questions, let's go. I'm going to read the super chat, go to a commercial break, come back and then watch the rest because they're they are annoying me. I'm wondering what her colleagues would think watching this and if she would feel comfortable and confident saying this in front of others in her field. Absolutely not. And the way she's answering the questions, it feels like she does not engage at all, really, with the degeneracy when it comes up. She just kind of skips the degeneracy and engages with other parts of the question as opposed to like tackle what they're saying and asking them clarifying question because she wants this to be a sort of uh, a convivial atmosphere. This is no, this is not camaraderie. We don't care about that. Ask your question. Challenge what is happening. Abs how is the group the cause? How how is the group that costs the US 50 billion a year gonna get <laughs> Girl, I don't know. 
I don't know, because this film made no sense. I have so many questions on, as to why women were better under control. Like, I need questions. I, I, I need questions. I need answers, and I have questions. Sounds like he should just date men for his health. I think so, too. By the way, I'm speaking loudly because I definitely drank before I came <laughs> I was told it was a home ready home remedy when you feel pain and I'm in pain. It didn't work. All I'm doing is being loud and that's what alcohol does to me, make me loud. Women are cooperative. Women are uh, natural born leaders. Look at the nations who have women as heads of state today. They flourish. Goldman Sachs 2023. <laughs> Period. That Goldman Sachs thing really had them mad. Whew. Someone said we can tell. I'm sorry. I'm loud right now. I, I I don't mind. I won't be able to talk tomorrow. Oh, the debate is Sunday. Please come to the debate. Um, the debate on Sunday is uh what what what's the debate topic again? Oh, is marriage beneficial or detrimental to black women? That is the debate on Sunday. So love can't wait to see you there. The way they don't hear the white supremacist talking points in their own talking points floors me. Yeah, not only that, but I saw a TikTok video once where this guy was going through um, what men seem to, black men in particular, seem to want. And they're like, no racism, no white supremacy, but they want to keep like patriarchy and ultimately subjugating women. So they can see all the other ills, but they cannot see their own contribution to the ills that the women in their communities experience. I thought that was really fascinating. Peace, blah, blah, blah. All right, let me play this commercial because we need a commercial break. Best sense. Period. What the, why do the kids say it slaps? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's get back. <laughs> Serious business and that's on karma. Period. Um. Let's get back to the foolishness. <clears throat> Blah, and out the blue, she just finds anything to just throw some shit. And I'm like, bro, that's when you got to understand when I say women operate in chaos. Because, like, uh, my bro was just telling me earlier, we, just, we were just talking about this earlier. Women to meet a good guy, everything perfect. Well, first thing they say, he's too perfect. It's boring. He's they want to nice, go, yeah, yeah, he's too nice. He's too nice. They want to go fuck with the, with the bad guy, with the bad boys. Because they like that chaos. It, it excites them. They want the thrill. Yeah. And men got to understand, it does not matter how perfect you are. They don't. It does not matter to women. You can have 30 years of being perfect. What did you do for me lately? They're not going to count that 30 years. They're going to look at today. They will find a problem today. Men know. We like, damn, she was a good woman for 30 years. She had an off day today. We're going to give you a pass. Women not giving you that pass. So when I say women are complicated and they like chaos, it's, it's you got to kind of understand how the feminine energy operates. But that breaks most men. I think that a lot of times... Um... I was waiting for this comment. I was waiting for this comment. <clears throat> Do you all remember that man who came online crying about he's a good man and nobody... You being 
the person a good human, a decent human being, does not mean any woman needs to or should or have to come and be subject to you, especially if they're not attracted to you. It is ridiculous to me. People are like, oh, I'm just such a good guy. They don't want the good guy. Maybe the good guy does not look good. Maybe he's not funny. Maybe like there is, there are so many things that could be wrong. The idea that you think, oh, I'm a good guy. And what about it? Here's a cookie. You're a human being who knows how to engage in the world, i.e. you're a good guy. Here is a cookie. Now, you don't, have, you don't have any right to access people. What do you mean? Sitting up there talking about, oh, I was a good guy. Okay, and he, she didn't want you. She did not want you. You probably lack confidence. You probably lack financial resources. You probably lacked a person. <laughs> You probably lack the personality. Like, what do you mean? You probably had bad, a bad odor. Like, what do you mean? You do not have a right to access people because you think you're a good guy. In fact, most people who claim they're a good guy are probably some of the worst. Probably some of the worst. Someone like, I'm a good guy. I pay my child support. I hope, I hope that you paying child support isn't what makes you the good guy. I hope, girl. <sighs> I think people know the bar is in hell and they weaponize how low the bar is. Yeah, in no way. In no way you're going to sit up there and say the, so, sorry, I'm reading. <laughs> I need to stop drinking. Period. I, I've not, I don't I, I don't drink a lot. Let's continue. Your experience, what you're exposed to, drives your perspective. And when a person's perspective is limited, it then starts to sound like every woman and her lack of ability to communicate is kind of boxed in. So what I mean by that is that not when you when you have a different entertainment of people around you and experience when you start to travel when you start to like um, move differently in life and you start to be exposed more to uh, outside of your environment your environment really impacts how you see people and I used to be limited in how I saw men as well because of where I grew up and what I saw and I just kind of like started to label men and women and everybody just based upon my small circumference. And so when you start to dive into other elements of life and move and move differently, you start to really other uh, cultures, other ethnicities, other, you know, countries, other cities, you start to see that everybody is not like black and white. And when you start to really understand what that means, that means that I must, as a woman, understand that not every man is going to understand my needs. So earlier when we were talking, when we were speaking about when I meant that men were simple, I didn't mean it in a negative way. I meant that they're simple where they just need clarity. Men, Most, need, men need peace. Yes. Men need something to eat. And men need to bust a nut and you to leave me the fuck alone. And that is simple. I'm trying to think how I should reference this lady. So someone, people keep sending me videos of Princella. And I've been watching um, quite a bit of Princella. And it seems like these men agree with her. Because to describe yourself, to reduce yourself to that, feels like you have not elevated in any meaningful way as a fully self-actualized human being. And if so many of us are at that level, that is, that is weird. Like, if you say this, if this is how you are describing yourself, right? There is a logical, a very logical next step. If, if people are listening to you, and this is how you, not anyone else, not Princella, not anyone, this is how you describe yourself. If that is how you talk about yourself, 
the very next step is to withdraw from you and people like you. What you just described is a an animal essentially operating on like pure instinct. Like there is more about connection and experience and uh, emotional elevation. Like I feel like the human experience is way more than that. Not even just men. But maybe I am wrong. Maybe this is the problem. This is why people are saying I am not a, a man. <laughs> maybe maybe this is why people say I'm not masculine because like I cannot the the, the perception of your manhood as limited to these three things just reduced you to literally nothing. Like just just a meaningless existence. Like also you can take care of all of that on your own, by the way. You can literally... <laughs> Wanda Williams, welcome to the membership. Like, there was a time where I was like, men should not have podcasts because this is embarrassing. I'm no longer there. I'm like, Tell me more, because maybe I am just so detached from all of this that, like, this this sucks. Like, listening to men talk about themselves in this way is really depressing. It's like you don't know, or you don't even engage to be better. Like, are you... The way you just describe yourself, are you okay with that? Is that where you want to be, like... Are you good? Because if I'm a woman, I am not, and I hear that, all I'm about to say is, okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. Like, ain't no, there's no fighting. Why? You, I wouldn't try to change that. I'm not changing. Look, I'm a man, and I'm not about to try and change your mind on that. I am not about, if that is who you think you are, then if you tell me who you are, I'm going to believe you. If you act According to how you say you are, I'm going to just believe you. I'm just going to believe this is who you are. I don't care what they say. This does not describe who I am. And maybe because I'm too feminine a man. And I pride myself in that because if this is what masculinity is and requires from the world, if this is all that masculinity requires from the world, then period, I'm not it. Okay. Ew. 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 Like a... What? Uh, the idea that I could be of service to people, that I could care for people, be in community with people, create commitments and follow through with these commitments, the fact that like I can create something and build something and be somewhere and feel significant, not because I am important in the moment, because but because I add value. And I can see people smile when I am there because I've helped in some way. Like the human experience is so much more than them three things. But I'm not here to convince you that it's not. I'm just listening now because, ooh. Women definitely need to understand the nature of man so that we can stop the cycle. And if they, if they are correct that this is the nature like, this is disgusting to me. Like, and the way he just said it, it's so crass and like, ugh. I don't know. And I'm just, I, I, I'm i willing to say maybe people, don't, they, they don't know how to articulate themselves better. And that's fine. Like, not everyone is like a PhD who can, like, talk, I guess. But this is bad. I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm hopeful, I don't know actually, maybe most men would actually describe themselves in this way, this is disgusting. Thank you by the way, Shelly. Belzebub is playing pool with the bar. <laughs> clarity. And we happy. And that is what clarity is, and you just, you just lay, you just laid it out thin and clear <laughs> as it, you see, it's clear. And when a woman doesn't know or feel comfortable within herself, which the other topic about self-confidence, when she's not as confident within herself and understand what she needs, then she will start to allow 
certain behaviors within another human being to be, you know, infiltrate upon her, then she will start to accommodate and start to, you know, make that person's identity a part of her own. And then she start to lose herself and then start making your home not peaceful. Then start to question every time you pick up a phone. Start to question every time you want to go out, I'm going to have a drink with my boys. Hey, you, know, you, know. It, you start to lose yourself when you don't know yourself. So Believe what you want about her. She does not think very highly of them. She thinks, because in their mind, the woman is supposed to lose herself in the man and in the relationship. But she rightfully is like, no, women, you need to know yourself and you shouldn't get lost. There's a lot of blaming. And I'm trying to go through what she's saying. She's saying you shouldn't leave, remove yourself. They're easy to please. They just admit to being easy to please. You, however, you need to know yourself and not get lost in the relationship and figure, look. All right. I think they, I wouldn't run to her to listen to her, but what she's saying undermines what they are saying. And I don't know that they know that she's undermining what they're saying and speaking to women about elevating and being the leader <laughs> and knowing yourself because men are simple and they just need instruction. They are ruled by three things that get. All right. Look, I'm here for, for leadership. I'm here for, for women leadership. So. <laughs> Some of the, the, the most capable leaders I have ever met in my life are women. Some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life are women. So, like, girl, I'm not going to extrapolate from my personal experience. I'm not going to take that. And I haven't done the research I need. I've done a lot of research in this. I'm lying. <laughs> I can't just tell a lie straight up. However, it's looking like when, when these men come out from Brookings talking about how men develop slowly and they need all kinds of help, Y'all better go do these research talking about y'all out here want to submit. Oh, all right, period. Mayoshi, thank you so much. It's the awakening. <laughs> it should be required to have at least a bachelor's to have a podca podcast. That'll clean house. <laughs> oh, girl, I need to hurry up and go through this. That's that has been my experience as well, Themis, and not just black women. Yeah. No, I, I, I've I met some super capable women. Like, even in my field right now, the people that I look up to the most are women. Like, they're badass attorneys. Like, like amazing. By the way, there's a club called Badass Attorneys. It's pretty cool. I'm not in it, but... <laughs> the bride's uh, Themis lip gloss popping took black men out of Oh. I don't know why you're playing because I'm probably going to go on whatever his uh, what's his name Pablo I don't know and he's probably going to make a video about why I put on my lip gloss so many times <laughs> like it's not a lip gloss it is a lip balm men wear lip balm I am masculine I am masculine <laughs> <laughs> I am not masculine because it's lip balm, not lip gloss. Let me see actually what it says. The classic all-purpose salve lip balm. Oh, it does say lip balm. I wish it had said lip gloss. I wish it did say lip gloss. Oh. That's why I, everything you said is absolutely true. But when you start to really understand the depths of a human being outside of your own environment, outside of, of your own self, it is a whole other level. So do you believe women need guidance or do you believe women need to ha have the freedom that they have now? Do you believe like, you know what, things need to change and maybe we need to, we need. This man just looked this woman dead in her eyes and asked her if she thinks women should have the freedom that they have now. What do you mean? So is she going to sit there and say, nah, you know what? I don't think women should have the freedom they have. I think they should be. <laughs> Jesus. 
the lack of intellect is annoying me. I must speed it up some more. So if y'all can listen quickly, my oh my god, there's there's so much to watch. We only made it through twenty eight minutes. <laughs> we literally only made it. <laughs> Uh, oh, the missile met I am man. Hear me roar. A <laughs> girl, period. I don't care about this video. The, pulling gears back a little bit because it's out of control right now. That's why I'm here. So we were talking about that yeah. over there. So I, I, I think on another note too, it's not always all bad. So say like if you're dealing with a woman and you present yourself to be a certain type of man. And you might be dealing with her for X amount of months. And you might go on the slope where the woman sees you lacking in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So now she might start to pick at those weak spots on you mm -hmm. to make you stronger. So you can look at it as like nagging, but it's more so like to, to get you to be, be better, to be more reassurance that you are the man she thinks you is. Like a test. So yeah, so now these tests keep coming up. And then as you either handle that test right or left, instead of her just telling you that you weak here, you this and that, she's poking at it so you can reflect on yourself to grow from that and then move forward. So these tests might not never stop as you're growing and evolving if y'all are growing together. So I look at it from that standpoint too, but then it is something that just used to operate from chaos where they just automatically going off the deep end for some entertainment. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, and there's <laughs> some depends. men that are not as, as um, aware and emotionally intelligent as you guys. There's, there's a lot of men that are... Girl, not as you guys. Ew. But not only that, if they're the pinnacle of emotional intelligence for men, we are doomed. First, first thing. Second thing is, you did not answer the question if women need their freedoms revoked. I ain't forgot... I am not, I, I have never been drunk in my life. I have been tipsy, but never drunk. So you, I can still remember that you definitely did not, did not respond to the question at hand. And sir, please, please ask, re-ask the question again. Objection. <laughs> re-ask the question. I need you to tell them, ask her rather, if women's rights should be rolled back. If we should be rolling back women's rights, ask her the question again because apparently she didn't hear and she's calling out emotionally intelligent people. I don't know why, but please ask her the question again because apparently she playing in our faces, pretending like she didn't hear you ask if women's rights should be rolled back. You heard, please ask her again that same question so she can answer. Not men considering lip hygiene a feminine trait. Girl, they're going to be big mad when they know when they hear that I do a lip scrub. <laughs> When they hear when they hear that I do a, a, a lip scrub and a lip mask at night, they go, <laughs> "Guy, <laughs> they're gonna be real mad." You know what I hate? I hate a dry lip where that is peeling. Mm -mm, absolutely not. In the morning, I do a lip scrub. There's sugar grains in my lip scrub that I rub off. And then at night, I do a uh, um, a lip mask that is overnight. Absolutely not. They need to stay plump. <laughs> you don't know when you're going to need to talk. Your lips need to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> lip care is really important. It's one of the most prominent things on your face. My nose is and my neck. But period, I have a very graceful neck. <laughs> Let me stop. She's trolling at this point. Has to be. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. She has to be trolling. Start the masculinity Skillshare course, team. Period. We're going to be up in there doing face routine, have all kind of acids on our face overnight. We have to wear sunblock. I don't like my sunblock. Yeah, it has a blue tint. They're not aware of their role as being men, and, it, and that might surface because they didn't have that role model from the beginning or a coach or anybody there to show them that, you know, maybe you don't have 10 baby mamas and 10 kids across mm. the world. I mean, you can, you, you know, you, you can become a you can daddy, but can you actually be a father and be a part of someone's life? So that is something that is culturally sometimes um, what leads us into these conversations today. Something that makes complete sense to you guys or complete sense to me doesn't make any sense to someone else who has never seen it, have never been taught it. Maybe all they've been taught is to get the bag, get the bitch, <laughs> spread the seed, and keep it going. That's that's a man to, to me. I got my bag, I got my bitches, I got my, I got my kids, I take care of them, financially, whatever that looks like to them. And so if you get a woman or a girl, whatever, wherever she is on that continuum, and she doesn't, that's why I go back to man, men are simple, whereas 
when a woman understands who she is and what she needs and what she Sorry, I, I stopped listening to this woman because he was dragging, she was dragging them, it sound like. But I just remembered there was this man taking all kinds of pills, running all kinds of tests. He's 45 talking about his like age, biological age or something. I don't know what he was talking about. Is 18. God, that man looked every bit of 50. <laughs> Let me find it. I have to find this. That man look. That man look every bit of fifty talking about his um his his chronolo- chronological age isn't his actual age because he's done all these tests to make himself young and he's talking and I'm looking at him and I'm like uh, I don't know who lied to you but if I'm supposed to visually see that you are somehow eighteen ain't no way ain't no way tell them to give you your money back. There is absolutely no one in this world that you are going to convince. Let me find this video for you. There's no one that you're going to convince that that, that, that you're 18. It says, Brian Johnson eats to reverse aging. I was 45. Now I'm 18. He said he was 45. Now he's 18. And I'm looking at this man. In a way, no hate. I don't like... I don't like people attacking this man. If this man want to take pills and eat for fuel and not have fun, that is his prerogative. Leave the man alone if that's what he want to do. People are like, why would you waste money on this? Why would you waste? Stop fucking watching the man. Ain't no way. All right. So let's let's let let's look at this eighteen year old. <laughs> <laughs> girl i am sorry you look like a healthy you look like a healthy 50 year old you look like a healthy 50 i look let's hear what he is because i'm tired of the, them people the only objective we have is don't die <laughs> don't die it's that simple but we're gonna we will, we're all gonna die now you don't think so this is the thing so this is why it sounds silly because i was told everybody dies the only thing inevitable in life is death are we driving past a grave this man looks younger than him i look younger than him i am not 40 i don't look 40 he doesn't look 40 Ain't no way people are literally telling him that he looks 18 or he's 18. Maybe his internal organs or something, girl. I don't know. Maybe they're harvesting, like, younger people organs. I don't know. But ain't no way. If you are the other day, and I pointed and said, great business, that. <laughs> because, yeah. because, you know, I think it was like a, it was like a, it wasn't a graveyard. It was a, um, like a funeral home. And I was like, great business. Yeah. That they'll, never, yeah. they'll never have a customer shortage. Yeah. And so the, my daily caloric intake is uh, 2,250 calories a day. Mm-hmm. Every calorie has to fight for its life. There's not a single calorie in my entire life protocol that exists for any reason other than serving a, an objective in the body. So dish number one is called super veggie. It's broccoli, cauliflower, black lentils, garlic, ginger, hemp seeds. And over a month, if you if you were to do this, with me, you would eat around 70 pounds of vegetables per month. 70 pounds of vegetables per month. Wow. Wow. And I think we also have in there extra virgin olive oil. (laughs) That man wanted to say, this is disgusting. You can look at the interviewer's face and know that whatever he's eating is disgusting. Let's watch some more. I didn't finish this. And ain't no way you're gonna tell me you don't got Botox fillers and a facelift. Look, I don't believe I don't know if this man has it. I'm 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 just saying. And chocolate. Yeah, I could taste like cacao, like dark yeah. chocolate. So we I pair the chocolate in here. It's an unexpected pairing. The way we think about this is you could say chocolate is good for you, which might lead you to eat a Snickers bar. The more precise way of thinking about it is you want dark chocolate, undutched, test for heavy metals, 
and has a high polyphenol count. If you don't do all five layers to qualify the value of the chocolate, you have an inferior chocolate nutritional value for your body. So everything we do at Blueprint uses that frame of reference of understanding everything a full stack way of how do you serve the body's objectives in the maximal way. That is a mushroom covered in chocolate. How fun. So interesting. Yeah, those, oh, those are mataki mushrooms. Mataki mushrooms. This is a normal broccoli, isn't it? That's right. You didn't put anything on it? No. No well, salt? I use potassium chloride, uh, no salt. And we've got some broccoli in there. So is that, is that that dish explained? That's explained. Okay. And then this is, looks like dessert to me. Nutty pudding. It is, many people consider it to be a dessert. It's macadamia nuts, walnuts, flaxseed, sunflower lachin, pomegranate juice, berries, and pea protein. And is this the entire meal you'd have in one day? There's one more dish, which we don't have, which varies day to day. Okay. But this is really it. I have three tablespoons of uh, extra virgin olive oil. One's in here. Then I have an avocado and a third meal a day. And this drink here that you've given me, what's Yeah, the, make sure you stir that up. Okay. That's the green giant. So the way that, that it works is I'll wake up in the morning. First thing I'll do is drink the green giant, take 60 pills. Work out for an hour, then eat super veggie, wait for an hour, eat nutty pudding, wait for one more hour and eat my third meal of the day, and then I'm finished for the day. How many pills will you take in one day? Currently 111. Wow. And you take 60 of them in the morning? That's right. Wow. Wow. That's an interesting taste. I've got to say, it doesn't taste amazing. You know, it's not like something I'd, I'd find in a, a, like a ju juice bar or something. Right. There's a little bit of a aftertaste to it that's not not fantastic and um i mean i like vegetables so i like most of this stuff the chocolate i think is a bit of a spanner in the works because <laughs> it's not like a chocolate th yeah. that you'd get it's not milk yes. chocolate or a mars bar, that's right. right it's um a very very dark yep, bitter mm -hmm. taste which is a strange thing to add to a mushroom yeah you um, could also put the dark chocolate in the nutty pudding or you right. could have it independently i find it's fun because it's a new experience for people to try so it's really an optional thing. Oh, this is not. A lot of things you'd expect, basics like vitamin D and C, uh, more advanced things like alpha ketoglutarate or metformin or carbose or other things. Anyway, I'm going to live my life. It, it's in, to, if you obsess about maintaining this kind of body or whatever, you don't ever live unless you enjoy doing all of this. And maybe he does enjoy doing all of this. So I, I'm not, I don't care about what he does. What I do care about is I hate, he's a, probably a billionaire. I didn't look him up, a super billionaire. And so like everyone around him is telling him he's a... <laughs> I want to be this level of delusional when I grow up. I want to walk around and everyone just tell me that, like, I look 18 for the rest of my life. Because, <laughs> period. <laughs> period. Anywho, let's continue the foolishness. <clears throat> she lacks. Men naturally are there as protectors. They want to provide. It's, sure. a, it's a natural. It's like right now, I, I, I just met you. Men are naturally there as protectors. They want to be provided. Let me write this down. Because there ain't no way. Men, natural protectors. I'm writing it down because I'm going to forget. They want to provide. Okay. The last sentence, they want to provide, doesn't matter. It don't matter. If you can provide that you want to provide, doesn't matter. But I wrote that down. They are natural protectors and they want to provide. Oh, I'm not pretending. I'm, I actually wrote it down. And I'm sure, without a, like a unreasonable doubt, about, if somebody came in and started to do some weird shit, I'm sure your natural instinct as men, not as boys, you would probably stand up and probably protect Absolutely. as a natural instinct. You know what I'm saying? It is only because I think that you know that I'm clear about what my role is. I know what I can and cannot do. 
I know that I need a man to do certain things. I know I'm physically not stronger than a man, biologically, not because I just feel that I am. I know mm. because of education and research, biologically, I am not. Let me it's, ask you this, though. Just to switch gears, not to interrupt you. What's your thoughts on feminism? How, how, how do you feel about feminism? How do you feel about the movement? Do you agree with the movement? Are you a part of the movement? Are you against the movement? Because in my opinion, I feel like that was one of the biggest reasons that our community, specifically the black community, is in such a disarray right now is getting... So you think feminism is why the black community is in disarray. You don't think it's slavery. You don't think it was Jim Crow. You don't think it's redlining. You don't think it's racist policy. You don't think it's the police. You think it's feminism. Feminism is why the community is the way it is currently. Not any system. Not, all right, y'all play too much. Let me stop talking about racism too, period. And period. Women behind the feminism movement because a lot of women don't even know that that was funded by the CIA. Right. Like, if you tell people that, they're like, what the fuck you mean? Like, yeah, just do your research. Like, that actual movement itself was right. funded by the government. Which is most things. And are. every time the government funds something like that, it's to, you know, it's a bigger motive behind it. So I challenge people to do your research on that part of it. Right. But how do you feel about the movement itself? I feel as though women need to understand and really be honest with themselves. I'm, I'm honest with myself. I know I need a man. I want a man and I need one. And, and not in the way that most people might interpret that. Um, I, as you know, I, I'm educated. I can, I can physically provide my basic needs, like that Maslow hierarchy of needs, like shelter, those, you know, where I live, that water, running water, those kind of like basic needs. But I know above all of those basic needs that there is a certain level of love and connection that I cannot achieve without my, a man. Right. And, it's, and this is the thing that women, I think, are getting lost. They think it's a weakness. They're starting to have this narrative, especially within our community, that black community, that if you say you need a man, to need someone, they have to provide something. And the idea, something that you cannot live without. The idea that you want something or someone is beautiful and amazing. To say you need it is a, is a lie. Particularly after you moved up in the Maslow's hierarchy of need, if you read that, the basic needs are what you, the basic things are what you need for survival. Everything after that, I would hope we achieve higher into self actualization, but we don't have to. Uh, he is full of perspectives. I bet he's <laughs> flammable. I think he's, you said preservatives, and I definitely saw perspective. I can't. I think he doesn't eat naturally. So, yes, he is full of preservatives. I literally saw perspective and I'm annoyed at myself. I'd rather eat a whole jean jacket, period. This is orthorexia. Is this the dude using his teenage son as a blood, blood boy getting transfusion from his kid? Oh, I don't know. Oh, my God. Ew. I don't know. I should look into this. You're saying that somehow you're just weak-minded and that you're worthless and, you know, that... It, I don't know. It's, it's the most ridiculous thing in the fucking world. But you're going to fuck all these other boys, trying to make them into men, and then you just become a 304. <laughs> say it again. And it, it may be unintentional, but you need to understand that it's okay to say when you need something. When you don't know that you need something, a lot of times when you ask somebody what you need... I, I agree with that, only that part. It's okay to say when you need something... Period. I need you to have more money. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> when she said men don't have serotonin, I disregarded everything she said after. I don't think she said that. I hope she didn't say that. I didn't hear that. But I disagree with a lot she just said about needing... To be fair, she said she needed a man. Period. Good for her. Thank you, Ferris. What do most people say? I'm good. That's fact. That's ego. Yeah. People got to kill that ego. Yeah. I'm good. I'm cool. I'm good. You're doing good and well. You're drowning with all kinds of shit going on. But if somebody's... Safety is a lower level need. Explain femicide. Period. Talking about men are natural protectors. All right, girl. This idea that men are this or that is kind of reductive, but I definitely am not going to sit here when the leading cause of um, death for me black men in particular is homicide and say men are natural protectors. Absolutely not. Because that idea is going to have you out in these streets thinking that these people are going to protect you when they're looking to abuse and use you. Absolutely not. I will never say some foolishness like an entire group, an entire group is natural protectors. You have, nah, period, psychology. 
is actually like positively trying to intentionally asking you if you need something. It doesn't necessarily have to be a monetary, you know, compensation. It might just be something like you just need somebody to talk to. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of that depends where it comes from. You know what I mean? A lot of people at certain ages might have go through certain things where people use that against you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody ain't genuine no more where I could do something for you and I never speak on it. I might have forgot I even did it for you. Some people would do something just to throw it back in your face. You know what I mean? Or I did this for you, did that for you. And it's another form of control to a certain extent if that person is not genuine. Right. Because now you feel like you own something. Well, right. I did all this for you and now I want something in return. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think if we get rid of the feminism movement, our community will start to push forward as far as the relationship between men and women. Because right now... What is feminism? The, mm, I, I wish that were me. I don't know. I don't like talking to certain people, but like there are times when things come up that like, what is feminism? Let's say women don't get the right to vote anymore, can't work, can't contribute, can't go get an education. Let's say we remove that because feminism is about equality in that way. Take it away. Who going to provide for them and their children? Let's take it away right now. Who going to provide for them? Not who is going to provide. Who going to provide for them? Please let me know. Please let me know who is going to take care of these women and children if you take away the ability to engage in this way. Y'all play too much. Y'all are asking for responsibility from your ego, knowing you can't afford it. You can't afford it. This is probably why you're propping up here with a... <laughs> Let me stop. Now it's, it's complete chaos. I mean, feminism has women believing that serving their man makes them a slave. Serving their family makes them a slave. But serving a boss and a company and being an employee is freedom. Right. No, it's not freedom. It's called capitalism where they're getting paid for it. Talking about who, why, why should anyone be serving you? Serve yourself. The, who, the fact, this is so annoying to me, and I think it's my paradigm, and it will continue to be annoying to me. I believe myself to be a leader. In that way, I am a servant. I am not the one who should be at the head of the table. I don't care about any of that. Leading means you are serving people. That is it. If you think there are other kinds of leaders, period, you go forth and be it. But every time I hear people talk about, oh, people should serve me, people should serve me, I'm the leader. I don't know what that means because you being the leader means you eat last. You are the person who takes care of everyone else. You are the one in service to what do you mean? This is so annoying, and I'm literally running out of time. Let's continue. Like, that, that's insane to me. It's like, but it's programmed. It, right, it's crazy. Like, it's, it's really it's insane it's to me. And to get back to your point, you're right. But my, mama, my mother taught me, she said, you never give away something you're not willing to lose. And so if I had to learn this a hard way, and it's still really hard for me to ask for help. It's something that I deal with. You can ask my husband on a daily basis, even with him. I will, I will try to access whatever resources I can. And I might just be just, just tired as fuck. You're like, why didn't you just ask me? I'm like, because, and it's ego, but then it's also like, I still in the back of my mind, like, well, why won't you help me in the back of my head? But then I'm like, my mother, I, it, it drills back. You never give something that you're not willing to lose. So if I'm okay with asking for what I need, even if that person feels a certain way, what they feel has nothing to do with me. That is, that is the emotional intelligence masterclass of the fucking decade. When you can separate your feelings from somebody else's feelings. I can hate this table. And, and if you say you love it, I'm okay with that doesn't mean that something's wrong with me right. for hating that table. But that's where the gap is. And with the feminism, that is where the intellectual and the emotional intelligence is not there, is that they can't separate the two. When you tell them by giving away your shit, your poo nanny to 20, 30 different men is not going to lead you to maybe your husband, they're interpreting that something differently. They, they take it, people will take that so personally, even if it's the truth, because they don't know how to separate the two. And if you don't know how to separate the two, you will never grow into being what you want to be. Okay, let me ask you this as far as education, because you said you have five degrees, oh, God. right? So women, women of today, they use that as like a mm -hmm. stepping stool to look down mm -hmm. on their counterparts or to look down on men. Like, hey, I got these degrees. Ain't nobody using their degrees to look down on anyone. You feel insecure and insignificant compared to people with degrees, and you are externalizing that feeling. Ain't nobody trying to go to school, do all this work just to come back and look down on you. If you feel like a wannabe, then just say that. Don't sit up there talking about people go to school to get degrees to come look down on people. Nobody is about to do that. 
No one goes to school just to come out and look down at people. Y'all are playing in your own faces. You're playing in her face, and I don't know why. If you feel insignificant, say you feel insignificant. Don't sit up there and blame the people who go to school, get their education, come back living their life. You are trying to access them. They tell you no. You are like, oh, you're looking down on me because of your education. What are we going to talk about? Tell me, what are we? Is the conversation you're trying to have with the person who has the quote unquote education, is it going to sound like this? Because this is reductive. This is remedial. This is beneath anyone with half a brain cell. You don't have to go to school to have a more elevated conversation than the one going on here. So if you feel inadequate, please say that and stop externalizing it to people. You can go to school and get the five degrees if you want. <laughs> this is my theme if he tried it. Not y'all back there. That man tasted that food and said, mmm, so interesting. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You don't qualify for me anymore. Even though everything a man looks for has nothing to do with a degree. Right. Now, in my personal... How? No one cares. Frustrating. She said you don't qualify. You are saying nothing you care about has to do with degree. Okay, fine. Then she's what you're looking for, but you are not what she's looking for because she's looking for a degree. It means y'all are incompatible. You said she goes to school, get her degree, and then I don't qualify anymore. Okay, then go find someone you qualify with. Why are you telling us you don't care about her degree? She obviously cares about yours that you don't have, and so she didn't choose you. No one cares. About, if you said she qualifies outside of her degree, that's fine. She said, you don't qualify because you have no degree. It's fine. Move on. It's fine. Take the L. Go find someone else. Opinion. I got my own opinion on education, mm -hmm. but we won't dive too much into that. How do you feel about the women that have that stance? Like, you're less than or I deserve more simply because I decided to get educated, even though it has nothing to do with anything... Yeah, they deserve more. If she thinks she deserves more, she deserves more. I got educated. I want my partner to be educated. And what about it? And what about it? You going you gonna to make me stop? You going to make me stop and just choose you just because the bar is so low? If I need someone, I have to reach... The, no, absolutely not. If they want someone with an education, they can find someone with an education. It is just that simple. Thing a man looks for, or you know, your your core values, integrity, you know what I'm saying? Everything that makes you a good person. Right. They just use this degree, that's it. I'm better. Yeah, that's fine. You can be a good person without the degree, which she wants you to have. And if you don't have it, you, the good person, will not meet her standard. Because you are quote unquote good person doesn't mean you have the qualification. You can cry all you want. Hopefully, that doesn't have her lower her standard and then resenting you. Then I deserve everything because I decided to go to school. Like, how do, where does that mindset come from? And how do you feel about it? Well, lack, lack thereof. I mean, I'm going to just keep it real. Degrees doesn't, you know, make you better than anybody. Most successful people don't even have degrees. And I must say that after getting all their degrees now, all that is a lie. That is, that is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie from the pits of hell. The people at the top generally do have degrees. And if we break this down by sector, it's going to be even more degreed up. I don't know what she's doing here, but this is an absolute lie. We take the Steve Jobs and all those people who actually did go to school and even drop out. We take the Mark Zuckerberg. We take all those people and we try to make them the the the, the sort of standard for the entrepreneurs. This is not the case. This is not the case. Most people, even entrepreneurs who do well, actually went to school, graduated, opened businesses, failed a bunch of times, and continued. The idea that you're going to become a crypto bro or just open a start a podcast, which is a new thing, or be an entrepreneur and become a billionaire immediately is an absolute lie from the pits of hell. fucking student debt i probably wouldn't even go that route again Ooh. but that but she lying 
She lying. She definitely lying. Again, talking about she wouldn't go. Well, let me hear. Maybe her man is a multimillionaire. I, sorry, I don't know. How can I say? This is, this is where the two-edged sword comes into play. My intentions were different by going to school. So my intentions weren't to go to school for me to, you know, look down on people. Some people do. They want, they want to happen to horror. I'm Ain't nobody going to school just to look down on people. I am not saying, I am not saying there aren't random people who might only go to school to say, I'm better than you. But most people are not going to put themselves through that kind of foolishness to just to say they're better than someone. No. Maybe other people are going to schools for the reason you went to school. Think about that. Oh, I didn't go to school to, to be better than people. I went because of the different reason. Whatever reason you have is why most people probably went to school. Try to create a better life for them. All this research says if you go to school, you get better chance at upward mobility. And y'all are here talking about, oh, people go to school just to come out and flex and say they're better than. Anybody got time for that? Women continue to be great. Get your education. Please do not listen to that. Please don't listen to that. And the, no one is about to take care of you better than you can take care of you. There is zero per people in this world that can take care of you the way you can take care of you. And I'm not about to debate anyone on that. I'm talking in absolutes. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't believe there is anyone in this world that's going to take care of you the way you can take care of you. But right, whatever right. that is. So my intentions were different. My intentions to go to school forward were to understand where I came from. And that's a whole different topic for a different story. I'm adopted. And so I wanted to understand biological, a lot of things that I was going through. And so I didn't have an outlet with regular people around me. So I saw education as my outlet. Right. So that was, that was my intention with it. But a lot of the times people do mistake intelligence with education. Just, I know a lot of dumb, smart people, if that makes sense. No, that makes total sense. I know a lot. And I know a lot of um, women and men that think that just because they go and get these master's degrees or doctor degrees automatically, that puts them on this different level playing field. And it might on a superficial way, but if you haven't learned emotionally who you actually are and what your intentions are with the education you've gathered, I, don't, I, I know what my intentions are when I gather the information. I want to share it. I want to hopefully inspire somebody out of some kind of, you know, rut that I was in. You know, looking at that person who I was a few years ago, looking at the person I am today, I never think I'd be sitting here talking about this today. Right. Ever in my life. Yeah, that, that's deep because my whole goal as far as battle with the sexes goes is to discuss the things that are going wrong because you can't solve a problem without addressing a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? Coming up with an equation to solve the problem to move forward. I mean, like a lot of the content now, they just feed off of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's what sells. Like, yeah. hey, when, men and women clashing. Oh my God, men yeah. shitting on women or women shitting on men. They just want to see the clash. But I'm like, at the, at the end of it, where's the solution? Like, where is this getting us? Like, okay, it's cool. We're going to clash, whatever. But where is the solution? So from your standpoint, it's very difficult to trust someone who wears shades inside. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's petty. Ignore it. It's actually kind of meaningless. But like, even when I'm out at, like, at night and I see people in their shades, I'm like, oh, okay, girl, period. You do, you, you be the best you, you can be. Uh, when they say good men, high value men, they are talking about hip hop culture because the top 5% of men do care about education and brag about their part. Yeah. What do you feel can be the solution to ending the gender war? I think that it, there is no war. It is, it is a mental game. When you, when a, I'm going to speak from a woman's perspective. When a woman starts to decide that she wants to understand herself, Mentally, physically, psychologically, spiritually. When she starts to understand what she needs, clear vision of what her purpose is in this, in this life, then she will be able to attract whatever else comes her way. Because women are the, the birth source. You know what I mean? We birth children, we birth life, we give life. And that is something I think that sometimes that we forget that we do. And when you acknowledge what we are meant and our roles are, um, you, you, you don't think about, you're not in a competition with a man. There is no way that I can compete with you, compete with that man, compete with my husband. There is no way. That is a never-ending uh, battle that is not even worth. You're supposed to be, I'm supposed to be his helpmate. I'm supposed to help him become the person that he's meant to be because God has already ordained in him as well what I am. Because I am the life source. When you really think about it from a spiritual connection, when a woman knows what she is destined to be, she'll know that I have what he needs. And what he brings to me can only enhance me. But if you don't know what you need, you don't know who you are, you have no idea where you're going then you look for him to guide you with that. So, so from my experience, I agree with what you said about the spiritual connection. That's how I look at mostly everything in the light now. But I, 
from my experience and from what I see, even from when we do bring women on here, majority of the people do not see past the five senses. Right. They don't even understand nothing beyond the universal laws or your right. spirit being connected to anything right. that's everything around you in your life. So it's hard to even wake people up in that. So she said she's the help mate while she's ordering him around. <laughs> and period. See, CRG, welcome to the membership. With those concepts, even when we break them down, they still don't get it. Like if you tell somebody, see here and say, this is why this is happening because internally you are bringing this to yourself. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? Right. They think like, well, I'm not the problem. Right. There's no accountability on that end. And I do think even to an extent that our women have a negative connotation on us as far as if a, if a white man approaches a black woman looking a certain certain way and a black man might approach, say just some flip-flops and an old t-shirt or something. If the white man approaches, they're, ne they're never going to just think immediately that this that this white man doesn't have money. But let a black man approach with that same fit on, they're automatically get away from me, nigga, you broke. Right? <laughs> so it's going to be, I think that negative kind of, that negative thinking is already placed on a black man if you're not up here or working on yourself right. internally. You know what I mean? Right. So, and it's it's rare that I believe, I can say everybody, but how many of our women do you see speaking life into black men, supporting black men in these ways? You know what I mean? Doing the thing. Why you need life spoken into you? Please explain to me that, King. She said, I never thought I'd be talking about this today. Drag him. <laughs> Why you need them to speak life? Anyway, let's, let's hear about the speak life into him. Things that they need. Like, I want to ask you, do you think it's more strength in being submissive than actually going against your man? I mean, when you talk about being submissive, you're talking about, for me, an element of my belief system and spirituality in God. He has to be a Godhead in order for me to submit. I'm not going to submit. I wouldn't submit to somebody who isn't led by God's wisdom, is not a wise person with their money or with uh, their, their their mental health. So you have to like be able to distinguish, is this is this my husband or is this my life mate? Or is this just, you can't just submit to any anybody. So I want to distinguish those two. But if, if you're saying that... All right. She just said you can't be broke. She said, women should not be out here just submitting to men. Period. Even if you want to submit biblically, she said, first the men should submit to God. Uh, look, I'm not into the submissive conversation, but at least she has standards for her submission. I'm not defending her, but girl, ain't no way. Absolutely ain't no way. She said, I never thought I'd be talking about this today. Drag him. Period. I don't know why y'all out here talking about some submission. Better speak life into him. <laughs> My in Fiji. Ah, uh, does Demas have sister? No, I do not. It's just here. I do not. I am, however, gonna twist my hair when I leave to go to Asia. I am going to do that. I will be twisting it Monday. Actually, you'll see it on Wednesday. I'm going to probably twist it Sunday. This is my life mate and or this is my spouse. Then I feel as though being submissive is just um, a symptom of love. See, but this is why I'm asking because a lot of women think that, like you say, being submissive makes them weak. I think that being submissive takes, that's more strength in a woman. Okay, then you be, if being submissive means you're stronger, you be submissive. Because y'all play too much with that submissive word. Talking about, oh my God, submiss one unto another. Y'all know these men ain't about to be no submissive. If you really believe it's so much strength, then maybe these women say they're tired of being strong, so you submit. <laughs> you submit. She she initially, she opened up, initially opened up. She opened up by telling you that her husband is submitting to her. I don't care what she says. That's what I heard. Um, and so she's telling y'all now that love, love, a consequence of love is submission. I don't agree with this. You said being submissive is more is more difficult. Okay, period. You do it. You do it. Period. Theme is you're absolutely gorgeous. Period. I love a good compliment. Um, that skin. That skin is skinning. Why am I doing this? And being under a man's authority or being under a man's control versus you want to run loose and do whatever. That's easy. That's what so so exactly. So right. when, oh, when but once women, if they were a man, it's easy to be submissive to a man. I've never I've never been around a, a real man. Um, that I wasn't willing to be submissive with if, 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 if his decisions are in alignment with a man's decisions. 
If I know that he is in control of his emotions, and maybe I'm not in control. I, have, I used to be. Well, who would who would so, define that? Though? Yeah. So where? So because so, a woman can't define a man's decision. Men have to define. Men have to define men. A woman can't define. Right. That. No. I mean, like, as far as when you're deciding whether or not to be submissive, when when you know that it's naturally an inclination for a woman, when a man has shown like the behaviors, uh, his daily behaviors, maybe he's just a calm human being, especially within chaos. He, his decisions are pretty like consistent. Um, he follows through. Um, he says what he means, even if he don't like it. He so that's what I mean about a woman being comfortable with falling naturally submissive to a man. So it goes, it goes based off of like what we were saying earlier. A man can have all those qualities, but say the man doesn't make X amount of money as the women does. Money doesn't have nothing to do with submission. Yeah, yeah. It shouldn't, but it should. But in today's society, this is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A woman will automatically. Wake up, make up, say, oh my God, thank you so much. I will finish this segment. We are going to finish watching this, I don't know when, maybe this weekend. I'm working on some videos because I want to put videos up for the fighters. I won't be here. I want to make sure there's something still here. Um, so I will be working on that. So I might not be able to do it this weekend. Um, but I'm going to listen to this part and then we can close. <gasps> I didn't open the panel. I literally, for the entirety of this, I wanted the panel open. So you all, oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to give you guys a gift. We're going to do a play game and I will be giving out Cash App or something. Um, yeah, I have a Cash App now. So I will, um, we'll just send Cash App as a sort of way to say sorry, because I should have opened the panel. I gotten a lot of messages saying people miss talking to me, and I appreciate um, you all, and I miss talking to you all too. So what I'm going to do is, um, before I leave for vacation, um, I have two more weeks. I won't be on this Friday because Beyonce, um, but when I come back, I will probably do a game show where we play and just send out Cash App, just like a thank you or something. Um, so I appreciate that. I want to know her husband's resume. I bet he has his own practice. Let, let, I want to hear his husband's resume too. But I want to hear this money thing. Assume that if, a girl. If, okay, well, you're right. Well, you can say that then. Yeah, you're right. Well, a girl. Whoever yeah. sits next to her, a girl decides. Not him, I'm playing. Nah, yeah, talk to him. Talk to him. And basically, then you're just like, oh my God, like this shit is ridiculous. Like you wouldn't follow them to a fucking circus. Like, really? It money, and that's where the narrative needs to change within this dynamic here. This is why, again, I'm so glad to be a part with you guys is to show that that is not, we need to change the narrative. If you want to, nothing is wrong with making money. Money brings opportunities and options in this, in this world, Absolutely. in this spiritual realm. But if you can find a partner who you have clear visions with, both of you guys are clear about where you want to go. And then that's where the discipline comes from, him or from her. If you keep going out spending too much, like, I thought we going to say what that was the next month. It's no longer about, are you going out with your homeboys? You see how the reframing and reminding of the vision changes? I don't think you would get as mad if I said to you, like, babe, I thought you going to how much you think you're going to spend? I don't know, babe, going to all. But I thought, babe, I thought next month we're going to get that, trying to, you know, save 500 for that property. Oh, shit, you're right. But if I said, why are you going out with your homeboys? Oh, you mean at home? Huh. It, then it's all of a sudden, then there's a battle of egos, battle of everything. But if you have a clear vision of where you two are trying to go and navigate, and a woman learns to know how to communicate. That's why I say men follow clarity. Clarity, not emotions. Men are not emotional. Men and women are wired differently, brain-wise. When you say clarity, what do you mean by clarity? Clear. I, now, you saying follow a woman's clarity or clarity no, of life no, itself clarity, or his vision? So if you are... Girl, these men do not want to submit to the will of the, <laughs> of the feminine divine. She is like... This this woman don't respect them. She said men follow, and that is what that's, I don't agree with him. Her that men aren't emotional, but I think he she's just kind of coasting on and like just kind of rubbing the ego. But it feels very much like she's saying um, y'all are wannabes that need to be led. If you're speaking about... clear to me, like, yeah. Because I'm going to say this about submission, before, not to cut y'all off. Because women always define, well, I will submit to this type of man, blah, blah, blah. And in my brain, automatically, it's like, that's one of those things that goes without saying. Because it's like, if you're dealing with a man, you pick him. So there's no need to break down what you would submit to. Because if he's not the man that meets those qualifications, why are you dealing with him in the first place? Right. Uh, Demis, I thought Professor Emeritus Knowles Carter Wednesday. Uh, you are going to have a ball. Um. 
I'm going to go see Blue Ivy. I hope to see, I want to see if she brings out um, Beyonce. But definitely going to see Blue. Uh, the word submission is suspended for 50,000 calendar years until Batman forget it exists, period. It's really no need to break down, well, if he's will lead this way, do this, do that. Okay, cool. That goes without saying because if you pick them automatically, he should fit those qualities. If not, why are you even dealing with them? If you pick, you must submit. That's why when he was asking, like, you know, a lot of women have a problem submitting. They're picking guys that they don't feel is worthy of submission. So why the fuck are you dealing with them in the first place? Because you don't know yourself. I've been married Damn. August 27th. I'll be married 17 years. And he is not the man. If if today I was to meet if who I am today, because I know who I am, would have met him 17 years ago, I'm sure we wouldn't have clashed. We would have clashed and I would, we would have never would have got together at all. And so it's not, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a perfect union, but it was only because it's an ongoing growth process. I'm telling you, there's nothing about marriage, nothing about a, a partnership that is remotely perfect. The only perfect part is understanding that you're not and understanding what I need. So I've, I've learned for me how to say what I need. It doesn't mean that he's automatically going to do it the way that I think that I want him to do it. But once I say it, as a man naturally who loves his woman, will try any way to supplement that. Because if I say this is what I need, I need, I need more, you know, creativity in my life. He's not creative at all. We're completely opposite. If I say like coming here today, but I, but I need you because I feel more comfortable with you coming here with me and I'm meeting people. Okay, I'll do that for you. You see what I'm saying? But that is a growth process. 17 years plus. That wasn't something that was just initially there because as, as a young girl, still trying to figure out who I was and growing and going to school and understanding minds and what I needed, that's what sets you different. It's not about changing him. It's not about controlling him. It's not about the money. It, it really is. When people start to realize that, everything will fall naturally. It will. It, I, don't, I can't even like um, explain that even more clearly. No one, especially men, enjoys the peace of clarity. Yeah, when you talk about knowing yourself, I think like majority of people don't know themselves, right? right? So, so I think that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the problem stems from is people are programmed. It used to be mainly through television and like newspapers and shit like that. But now it's with the social media. Everybody's becoming the same person. Right. So you have no individuality with thinking. Yeah. So this is why when men are talking about problems on the dating market mm -hmm. or women are talking about problems on the dating market and it all sounds the same, yeah. it kind of cracks me up when people are like, well, you don't know all men, you don't know all women. But mm -hmm. when you really look at it, every Everybody's being molded into the same fucking person, which is why I could talk to a man I never met in my life, right. and he met the same bitch in a different body. Right. Or you met the same man in a different body than she did, but they all damn near the same. Like, they have the same thought processes. Society is losing the ability to think independently, mm -hmm. and our community is taking a fucking cliff dive because of it. So all of this shit that we're discussing, I'm trying to put it into the gender wars. They think I'm fueling it when they watch the content, because girls get up here drunk, acting a goddamn fool with the traumas and going off on us, but we're really trying to have conversations that, hey, how do we end this shit right. and be the example? So I'm trying to kill feminism. I'm trying to kill the egoism. I'm trying to kill... So we just, so we just, we should just ask <laughs> to stop on a live thing. Uh, right. My thing is, um, this doesn't make sense. Someone said he's triggering. Um, he, the way he talks is very annoying to me. It doesn't sound like he's listening at all. The materialism, because all of that shit is just destroying us. Like you said, you could be a man of character, blah, blah, blah. But if she got degrees and make a, a little more money than you, she's not going to respect you. She's going to look down on you. Like you call them little girls, but I mean. These are full-blown women, 30, 40 years old. Yeah, but this fucking mindset. I've learned, too, like, I've seen that, um, I wish I could bring up the stat, though, but they said majority of women, minds don't go past the, like, age of, like, 14 or something like that. So That's that's not true. So see. so the cells of the body, so the thing about, I love this, I get, I get aroused from the cellular activity of the brain. So it's called <laughs> epigenetics. So you can um, increase the cells that you have by having different experiences in your life. So that's that's why I said it's important for people to get outside of their comfort zones, get outside of their environments, start to explore other areas of the world, other people, because you have different cell connectivities, and those connectivities increase your brain mass, which just means that increasing them, but what are they increasing them with? See, so, so, so I'm going to disagree because <laughs> they, had, they, they, they had a study with these phones and stuff like that. No, that's not for, accurate. Sure. No, I'm telling you, this, based yeah. on this research of the Journal of Psychology, the Journal of... Hold on, he didn't even get the full point. Are you like, no, ain't Hold on, let him, hold on, let him, hold on. Hold on, because okay. look, every study she quoted is... Them, but what are mm -hmm. they increasing them with? See, I would so, 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 so I'm going to disagree because... <laughs> They had they, they they had a study with these phones and stuff like that. No, that's not for, accurate. You don't think it's accurate? Oh, come yeah, on. Hey, look, hey, look, hey, look, hey, let me study some studies, Dr. Let me see. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's not she didn't even let me finish. Hold on, let me finish. Hold on. 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 H
This woman just quoted the Journal of Psychology. In law, we also have a bunch of journals from a bunch of different schools. And it bothers me to no end when people do not understand authority within research. It annoys me when people argue and fight with you and try to make draw a sort of equivalency between random articles on Google with peer-reviewed research. This blows my mind. I don't know if she's right. I don't care if she's right. The idea that they're arguing like, oh, we Googled it. I can't. I can't. I can't. Understanding that that is not correct? No, are you? Are Can you just think that maybe you didn't know? It's something that you didn't know. Of course, but epigenetics, I'm telling you, just because okay, something okay. is not positive doesn't mean you don't make a new connection. So you're making a whole, let's say all of a sudden now I go Saudi Arabia and NA at war and I make this whole new connection. Now I'm going to be a killer and I want to do all kinds of weird shit. I have acquired millions of other cells based on those new connections. And I'm not judging the connections. I'm not saying that every connection that you make is positive. I'm saying that he asked a question about them dying and then they can't be. Because I was leading up to what, what I was about to say. <laughs> no, that's correct. Yeah, so, in the book. So, like I say, so, like, whoa, wait a minute. Average, yeah, everything ain't in the fucking book. Did, did, but, go ahead, get this shit even off. Even then, the average person, what are they doing to even increase them? You ain't just waking up, your brain is increasing because people are not even using their brains. So, not, and, and, more, and using it, let me say, constructively. They're not they're not constructively thinking in a certain way. So, nine times out of 10, they're recycling the same thoughts every day and recycling the same experiences. But what I was getting at is that they did a, they did a study. Mm -hmm. Who and did? It, they, let, me get, let me get to it. Look, so basically, people are addicted to distractions. And they, okay. according to a study, you were addicted. She said, who did the study? He said, I'm going to get to it. You are reading it right now. Just look at who did it. Like, this is so annoying to me. Watch her also try to play it off like they said some, some, some smart stuff. Let's hear what they say, because I don't even know what they're talking about right now. About 80% of your day. So every time you respond to a new impulse or a new distraction, you burn up part of your brain energy. At the end of a typical day, a person's IQ has decreased about 10 points. So basically, you're becoming stupider throughout the day by being on your phone, equivalent to what um, a college level to a, a truck driver intelligence type. Mm -hmm. So scientific articles on this that stimulates your mind so much that what happens is it triggers dopamine. You get addicted to it. Dopamine has the same effect as cocaine on the brain. It gets to the point you can't shake it to the point where nine times out of ten, even if you're walking outside, what do you see all day? People on their phones, right? People can't even sleep or wake up without being on their phones. You can't just put your phone down and do consistent work without checking messages or doing certain things. So in reality, their brain is being programmed off these phones and it's, and it's killing off their brain cells. Okay, so it doesn't kill off the cells. It just multiplies the negativity, what you've already been programmed to be exposed to. That's what I'm saying. So are, you, are you becoming smarter or what's what going on? I didn't there? say you become smarter. I'm just saying smarter what you already know. So all I'm saying is that. I wouldn't have this conversation. The moment you said being on your phone is killing off your brain cells. Um, I'm just going to, when you, when we talk about developing new sort of new, neural pathways, that is different than saying it's killing off your cells. And I'm not about to engage with you. Like, I'm not about to. <laughs> I'm not doing it. As soon as you said it's killing off your brain cells, I'm not engaging with you. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. She can do it. I'm not doing it. That when you have new connections, that means experience, whether they're, you think they're good or they're bad, I'm not judging those. I'm saying you cannot kill those off and make them better unless you are exposing yourselves to something on a different level, something that's completely different with your thing, but you can't kill them. You only make what you already have stronger. Let me ask you this. Nah, so let me ask you this. So if they say it's equivalent to doing cocaine, so a person, yes. so let me say, so if a person is doing cocaine every day, what do we say about people that's off, off coke? Eventually over time, this, this mind is gone, right? The dopamine rush you get on social media, while they, some research has done the analogy, it is not anywhere close to cocaine. It's not. I'm not. I'm trying to. Let, let's see. Here. They're what? killing off their. They're killing off their brain. So you right. think? So it's not. It's not killing off their brain cells when they do cocaine. Cocaine is different than the thoughts that you have. This is what course. I'm saying. But the brain. You didn't say that. No, I said it's equivalent. They they said don't mean it's equivalent, equivalent to, like to, to doing cocaine. It's, it, it doesn't have the same intensity or the same long-term effects as cocaine has on the human brain. Your thoughts and the experience you have with a human being does secrete dopamine. But the levels, that's why people get addicted to those kind of like man-made drugs at a higher level and faster because they give you a quicker rush. So how can, so how can you say those dopamines earlier of women having sex and chasing these highs as mm -hmm. just like an addiction if that's not the same thing? No, I, I use it as a metaphor. So it's like. I just metaphor is like a comparison, right? I, look, I think, I think, ask, I think like. when, you, when he's saying you're killing off your brain cells, you're taking it to a literal degree as like in a brain cell is. is eliminated from your brain. No. No, no, no. 
No, no, I don't care what she said. Yeah, that's what I'm taking. That's what I, when you say it's killing them off, that's how I'm going to interpret it. What do you mean? Oh, you're taking it literally. Uh, girl, how am I supposed to take it? You said being on your phone is making us stupider because it's killing off our brain cells. Then you are saying, oh, we didn't mean it literally. Then how is it figuratively killing off your brain cells because we're not using it again? Okay, then she's right. If you tell me some foolishness like that, like, oh, it's killing off your brain, I'm like, okay, girl, you might want to go over there and talk to someone else. I already know, because she seemed like she's acquiescing to them. She's going to give them give this to them, and I don't know why. Now, when people are wrong, you tell them they're wrong. And if they can't sit in their, them being wrong, that is pure ego. I am not friends with you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. If I cannot tell you you're wrong and you'll be okay with being wrong, I don't want to be around it. You should be able to tell me that I'm wrong, and I should be able to sit in being wrong. If I cannot tell you that you're wrong, that is too much ego for me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Absolutely not. Every day on my day, no. Because no, no, he, he asked you, he said, do you think people are getting smarter or, or basically dumber every day? He was like smarter to a degree. And he was like, no, they're addicted to distractions. Where if you're not feeding your brain new information, mm -hmm. you're not learning new things, you yeah. aren't getting any smarter. Most yeah. people. I know Whitehead is in his postmodernism bag right now, but words do have meaning. She just broke character. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why they're fighting for this. Most people live on a hamster wheel. They do the same thing every day. They consume the same information right. every day. They don't read. They don't, med they don't do anything mm -hmm. to enhance their, their IQ level or their smartness or learning anything. You ask the person, what's the last book you read? They can take the shade room <laughs> or Instagram. Right. It's, it's, it's like, like they acquired no new information. So how are you? If you're talking to me about other people and you're dragging other people and you say to me, Themis, most people aren't reading to improve their smartness, that is where our conversation ends. You don't get to drag people while being dumb. You absolutely do not. Not with me, maybe with her. Not. If you are sitting there and you say most people aren't improving their smartness because they don't read, I'm going to be like, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, have a good day. You're getting smarter. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, you know, it's like you're feeding a beast. That's no. what I'm saying. If you are feeding yourself the same information, you're not killing the cells, you're making them stronger. If you are listening to a certain type of music and then you you, you keep doing it every single day, you're not killing it off. You are enhancing that emotion. Okay, so, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. so let me yeah. say, let me say this thing. So, it's like so, a, so, no, no, it's like a saying. No, no yeah, brain. I'm just yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. So say Okay, so, so say, see how I, I interpreted it as actually I, I thought you were saying like No, not in the literal So let me say, let me say let me say so say if your brain is like if your brain is like soil and we plant seeds. Like you said, if you're not putting new information. Someone is like, oh my God, it's a word. I don't care if it's a word. I do know this. This is what a child says. I'm not sitting there with a grown man talking about you're not increasing your smartness. I'm not doing it. That's what I'm saying. Information, yes. them seeds that's sprouting become weed seeds. Yes. So now it's yes. tearing up the garden of the soil in your brain yes. versus if you're planting good stuff, good energy, right. then the fruitful seed is growing and your mind is expanding. Yes, I agree. So Okay, okay, so all of that just to agree. See, that's, when, that, that's the chaos I'm talking about. That's the fucking chaos I'm talking about earlier, right? No. We were all around the whole loop and she said, oh, yeah, I agree. You said killing. I actually thought you mean, meant that the cells were decreasing, like the literal sense of decreasing. That was my, that was what I was talking about. I didn't think... What do you mean that's what you thought they said? That's what they, when you said it's killing off your cell, they do mean it's decreasing. Stop apologizing to these idiots. Stop apologizing to these men for being smarter than them. Please stop apologizing to these men for being smarter than them. Because I can tell you what is about to happen. You, with your five degrees, just acquiesced to them and apologized for being wrong when you were definitely correct. And they, I'm telling you, in the next couple minutes, you're not about to just say, okay, let's move on. Look. I know how to vet. They're not about to just move on from this. They're going to rub it in your face that you with your five degrees, you are dumb and they're smarter than you even though they have zero degrees between the two of them. So I, I don't know this is a fact. They're about to rub it in. 
if they rub it in, I'm going to end the live stream because I'm way over time. If they do not rub it in, well, I guess I don't know how to vet. He has been making up words this entire time. <laughs> the chaos. I'm clear. See, I'm, so, I'm not bringing up that. I should rock the whole thing. No, no, but she so fucked up. She killed that shit off before you even said yeah, it. Like, no, it, it, it wasn't clear. Well, whatever you found ain't true. But everything I got is for real. No, because you see. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, you see how things can misinterpret. See, I was just black and white. Nah, that's funny. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. I apologize. I'm going to tell you one thing that I noticed nah, about a lot of us as people and what I started doing. I started, um, I started listening to learn. And when I listen to learn, I learn to listen. Mm -hmm. well, I know a lot of a lot of things that we deal with, it's like we already got that reaction. We're ready to say something before without even getting the point across. You know what I mean? So that's what I believe people should do. <laughs> okay, see, but, uh, I yeah, but you took a phone and was giving research. So I, it wasn't your thought. You was giving me something based on research. So when you said it, everything is based research. on research. You know, you, your degree no, is based on research. Yeah, but if I just, if I just told research. you, so if I just told you, and then you're like, okay, how you know this? Because that's what I'm asking anybody. If I don't believe it's true. See, that's what you know. Where do you, where did you acquire this information? Then that becomes a fact. But before, other than that, this lady thought she was being graceful by giving over to you all a point that y'all did not deserve. Y'all did not earn that. Y'all did not want that. She literally just gave that to you. And instead of being gracious and moving on, y'all decide to continue to beat up on her for being right. Because she was right. But because she told y'all, y'all were right. This is the problem. This is why you don't just tell people they are right and you don't just lie to people about how smart they are. Because instead of analyzing what happened and moving on, they're about to think they're actually right and keep rubbing it in. Let's see what the one in the white hat is about to say, because I think he's much worse than the other one in the white shirt. It's just my opinion. Yeah, I think we got lost in translation because I really like um, concretely understood killing off <laughs> as gone, like no more sales. The sales are decreasing and which can happen from drug abuse, from actual smoking the crack, smoking the coke. So that's what happened. That's why you have a lot of people that are end up, you know, See, that, that's, so that's why scientifically when you said that, I was like, I don't know. You took it to a literal sense when you were just more saying like, yeah. people are not getting smarter right. daily. Exactly. The average human is yes. not. The average yes. human is getting No, drugs can kill off your brain cells. You said it being on social media is like drugs. It's killing off your brain cell. But you want us to understand that drugs can kill off your brain cell. But when you said uh, being on social media kills off your brain cell like drugs, you weren't thinking that it kills off your brain cell like drugs. Absolutely not. I do not know why she backtracked. But no, it would be full force in there. Everyone would be mad because you're going to be wrong and you're going to know you're wrong. I'm not about to walk that back. What do you mean? And now they're rubbing it in. Move on. She was gracious, way too gracious. Actually, she was being a doormat for everyone to walk over because ain't no way you're about to sit up there and tell these men they were right when they weren't. You were not right. Please know you were not right. And that's just that on that. Actually, dumber with the phone. Yes. That's pretty much what he was saying. Yes. And the studies that they ran were showing like, hey, people like you are going down as they utilize the phone more than before we had the phone. But that right there is my problem with school and education because education is... Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Give an inch, they take a mile. Now he's going on a long, dusty diatribe about his problem with education. I I knew they were gonna drag her for it. As soon as she acquiesced, I knew they were not about to let it go. What I did know was that they were gonna go this far. That's what I didn't know. I didn't know they were going this far. Do not give in to people. This is why you don't be considerate and be like, oh my God, I know you are dumb, but I just want to make your male ego better. So I'm just going to lie to you and tell you you're smart when you're not. Then they're over here acting like they know what. They're going to embarrass you. They're going to go in public and pretend like they know what they're talking about because you told them behind closed door that they were smart. Now they're outside talking in public around you, embarrassing you because you lied to. Do not lie to people. Do not lie to people. Tell them the truth. Do not have your friends on American Idol singing when you know they can't sing. Don't lie to them.
Do not lie to people, because this is what happened. Now we have a dusty diatribe about to happen about the problem with education and how it doesn't teach you to think and how she was dumb even with her five degrees because she, they've been mad. Not they. I don't know what the one in the white shirt is thinking, but I know the one in the black shirt and the white hat has been upset ever since that lady pointed out that she had five degrees, even though she rested in the fact that her life experience meant more to her than her five degrees and that if she could go back, she wouldn't get the five degrees. I don't know why she's over there making them feel better about themselves, but how little do you think of them? How little do you think of them to think that you have to downplay your accolades in order for them to be comfortable around you? How little do you think of people you are talking to? You are telling them that they are right when you know they are wrong. How little do you think of people when you don't think you can actually go full intellectual in a conversation because they won't keep up, that you have to lie to them to pretend that they're smarter than they are. How little must you think of these men that you're talking to, trying to pander to? That is ridiculous. Now you have these men up here all high and mighty talking about this is the problem with education. Sir, tell me what the problem with with education is. Please tell me what the problem with education is, because what it sounds like the problem to me with education is currently is that the person with education is lying to you, telling you you're smart when you're not. That's the problem with the education that I see here. Absolutely annoying. I, I just knew it. I just knew this was about to happen. I just knew this was about to happen. She should have gotten a six degree, six degree in the dusty <laughs> dialect of Pukinese with a concentration on interpretation and rhetoric. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. In my opinion, is the domestication of a human. Is they've literally, you won't even take information if it didn't come from a book or. It's not true. What well, you just told him, like, no, evidence. you can't look up anything. I know, but you didn't even give him a chance to it wasn't even. Evidence. I, I know, but how evidence. did you know? But he, you didn't even give him a chance to get it out. And he was like, that's Google. It's wrong. Nope, you can't cross site it. She looking around like, I just gave you an out and y'all are dragging me. And I, I, what she should do is go back and double down. But what you should, what she really should do is like, look, y'all dumb. I was telling y'all this so that y'all would leave me alone so we would go on so y'all could feel good about yourself. But since you really want to take it there, that is an opinion, not an article. You that It is an article, not a research that was peer-reviewed. You can't tell me anything about it. My observation is correct. You did say killing off. Killing off doesn't happen in this way unless we're talking about drugs of your brain cell. I would just go in. I would just drag them. If she has the information, that is, to drag them, I would just drag. I would just continue to drag because I, I speared your feelings. I speared your feelings, and now you want to lecture me about why my degree doesn't matter. Absolutely not. We're going to take it there. Yeah, let's do it. If you thought I was flexing my degree a moment ago, wait till we finish this conversation we're about to have. I would go in. I would. I would. I w they would hate me after that. Imagine being gracious to someone and they just take it and just throw it in your face. Slap your... Like, what do you mean? Stay out of Pukitan, ladies, right? Because, look, no matter how much you bend, the envy will boil up. The envy will boil up. The envy was not going to allow him to just let it go. He needed to drag her, and he was going to find a way to drag her regardless. No matter how much she bent over and gave and, and cared and spoke life into them and agreed with their degeneracy and blend her degrees and her expertise to their degeneracy, no matter how much she gave to them, they were about to go and drag her. They were, they were looking for an opportunity. Even though she could have corrected them multiple times on multiple things, including that women's rights should be kind of, we should pull back on women's rights. She just skipped over a bunch of the degeneracy that they did. And even if she was wrong, which she wasn't, they could not afford her the same grace in the conversation that she has been giving them this entire time. And y'all about to sit here and talk about speak life. All right, speak life into him.
She was validating their thoughts, the entire convo, but didn't realize this is the result when you intellectually submit to people who were intellectually inferior to you. Absolutely fearless. That's exactly what happened. And I read everything that you said, and I did not add a single word to what you just said. Real life black male worship calls and effect in action. She expected praise and appreciation for her acquiescence, but she is punished instead. Yep. A cautionary tale of submission. Yeah, yeah, all of this. Clip this part. <laughs> like you could do in a book and blah, blah, blah. Even if she was wrong, this is the problem. Even if she was wrong, the amount of grace she gave them in the conversation, the fact that they could not afford that back to her annoys me to no end. Uh, evidence is you kind of shut it down before he even gave any type of evidence at all. But he did give evidence. That no, I didn't even finish speaking. That was a personal opinion. It wasn't. I, I was getting to the point. And then when I was getting to the point, I was going to read you the facts where I got it from but before I even got to that point. You got to the point. You said it was killing off the brain cell like 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 drugs, girl. Like, and that's wrong. That's what you said. That's what she responded to. Why is she saying, "Oh, I should have let you finish"? No, you shouldn't have. You, she he said what he was going to say. What other context do we need? Stop coddling these people. Drag them. They will understand after you drag them. Well, yeah, yeah, they're not facts, they're opinions. Okay, these so, are facts so that they just studied. <laughs> they're okay. opinions. Okay, so facts, so facts, are, so facts so, are just things that we agree on. So, 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 so you think you got a book, is it just an opinion, right? No, so when you talk about books, I'm not talking about just going to like, you know, Barnes & Noble. I am not about to sit here and describe the scientific method to anyone. I would. I am not about to sit here and explain not to anyone to these people after they try to compare a random article online to peer-reviewed research about an area that I'm an expert in. I am not about to sit here and explain the scientific method. Absolutely not. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. Nope. You can you can stay in your ignorance. I'm not doing that. I didn't go to. If I were, I did not go to school to get my five degrees. I'm her right now. To explain this to you, absolutely not. Nope. Someone said the scientific method took my head home. And reading some books on people who never like actually research human beings for years and years and study certain types of whatever it is, behaviors, certain things. But as far as research is concerned about the brain and the cells, when he said that, it clicked for me because that was an opinion of whoever wrote that article. I thought what he was talking about when he said kill. I know, I know, I know. We, you know already, I mean? we already clarified that, Ew. but this is my problem with okay. educated people. Is, that has nothing to do with that. He used the wrong terminology. No, what I'm saying is you would take things that you read out of a college book as mm -hmm. a fact when those are indeed opinions And I well. say the same about people who are not educated. They take things out of Google and think that is fact as well. No, he was just saying that they did. They yeah. ran a study. He wasn't yeah. saying it was actually factual That wasn't a study. That was actually based on their subjective opinion. Right. right. It wasn't from Google, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this, no, this, no, this is what I'm saying. She said that you got the information basically from somebody else, right? That's all school is. Every information you go to school, else. Okay. all information is passed down over time. We, we weren't, we didn't come out of the womb knowing everything that we She's trying to be nice. She's still trying to be nice. And they're just trying to hammer her. And they're wrong. And I don't like this. If you're right and you're hammering, I can feel bad for the person you're hammering because I don't think you need an intellectual slam dunk. This is disgusting. Intellectual masturbation is just ridiculous to me online. But if you're right, I'm fine. If you are wrong and you're doing all of this, absolutely not. This is the problem. And she knows they're wrong. And this is my problem. Why are you allowing people who are less we knew, right? Mm -hmm. You went to school to learn from another person that read out of a book that was written by another person. No. Yes. I'm talking about research. On okay, everything that you researched came from another else. person. Everything you learned was from so you, you just denounced it's his research. No, it doesn't matter, peer no, review no, or not. It was oh, other people you know, peer reviewing. That's I, what I'm saying. We just agree to disagree. Right. How about that? No, we can agree to disagree, but this is just for the, the people that's yeah. watching because I don't want people to hear that and be like, oh, well, yeah, that's right. If it wasn't peer reviewed by other people, it's not a fact because really it's just that's opinions that we all agree on. Like but, you, but you're doing the, the no, thing, but, she's the same but, she's but she's doing the thing like, well, this is a professional I went to, so right. it got to be this or that. That's basically the same thing because you so, said, let, let, saying, let, let me give, let me give an example. She said she quieted like, information. Like, surgery for somebody who's not licensed to do surgery. I can't. I, yeah, not but that's that, that not the same thing. So because you read about how to do surgery versus somebody who is actually, you know. I get the same example. Hold on, surgery existed before. Go to someone who Googled up an article about. Would you go to someone for surgery who's never done surgery? 
this man is gonna say, wait, 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 surgery existed before. Before what? Before what did surgery exist before? Please tell me. Because you're still not about to use that to answer the question. So after you tell me what surgery existed before, I'm gonna re ask the question that she asked. Because it is a smart question, but she's pulling back. And instead of pulling back, she needs to lean into this drag. The spirit of drag has come into her and she's fighting it. Don't fight it, let it out. Let it go. They need to be dragged. Would you go to a surgeon to perform a surgery on you or with an expert, or would you go to someone who has never performed a surgery who looked on Google? Please let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask it again. I'm going to keep asking it until you answer it. About surgery, or would you go to someone who actually has done the surgery and on multiple people? And who would you feel more comfortable? It's a question. More comfortable with laying on the table with? That's, that's totally. That's totally. If different. they both have done the action, then that's a different story. If this person has done the action without school, I don't need that. The same thing I said. Doctor Sebi didn't go get all these degrees, but he's been known it's because he's been he's been known to cure more things than a lot of these doctors are doing. According to who? According to people that that, that backed him up on his studies. His okay, look. This is the only thing I say about. <laughs> according to who? Cite your research. According to people. And ma'am, you're sitting there really talking to these people. According to according to people. People magazine, like what <laughs> Who are these people? Ask the question again. I'ma ask the question again. <laughs> Education, right? You become brainwashed to the system that you are a part of. Yeah, you learn things and, and this and that, but it puts you in a box, in my opinion. You become domesticated to where like she's even fighting against the fact that. What you said was an opinion, that but because this was peer reviewed by some other people, that makes it a fact. Like, if I ask the average person, is this a table? Would that be a fact? It is a table. Okay. Right. Does he think peer review means just asking random people? Wait, does this man think peer review? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think this man thinks peer review means asking random people. All right, girl. Note to self, not everyone deserves grace. Period. Note to myself, too. Thank you. And why is it a table? Because so, we agreed to call it a table, so, so that's not a fact. So a million people to be peer-reviewed. Right, but, but let me explain. This I'm showing you that's not a fact, so because we just agree. Do not explain what peer review mean. If you explain what peer review mean, oh, girl, we should have been done. With. No, but listen, mm -hmm. you just said that's a fact that that's a table. That's not a fact. That's an opinion that we all agreed on. Yeah. We all said, hey, we're going to call this a table. But in order to consider it a peer review, then there will be a million other people. Right. A million other people yes. that yes. would agree that this was a table. Correct. And not only just that, it will go through different trials. Okay, cool. All and that. then another million. Right. Here, yep. it'll, it'll, get, it'll get, you know, uh, videos Absolutely. And, and documents. Absolutely. So that is what peer review is. Okay, I'm with you. Saying listen, I'm with you there. That's still not a fact. It's it only a fact because we agree. So are we, we could have easily, right now a fact? We could have easily called this a car. Mm -hmm. If a million people agreed it was a car uh -huh. and they got peer reviewed, this would have been a car. So okay. it is not a fact. So the only thing that's a fact is it exists. But what we call it, that's not a fact. That's what I'm trying are to we get. Human? We agree. We don't. We, don't, we could have been anything. We could have called ourselves anything. So but the only fact is we, we are human. I'm we saying we agree. We're more spiritual beings. Than, that. But we more, we're, we're more spiritual beings having a human experience. <laughs> okay, this is the only thing I'm getting because. Get no, no, no. We don't want to get distracted. I just like that you went into that debate because. What you were saying, as you were saying, what he said wasn't factual, you were also, what you were saying wasn't factual. Just because it was peer-reviewed and this and that, it doesn't necessarily... But you don't even know what I read was peer-reviewed or not. She just, but she, that wasn't Google I had it from. That's what I just told you. But you made an assumption. I was just kidding. No, <laughs> no, you need to explain that it's not peer review because you brought it up. You don't know if it's peer review because you randomly Googled it on... Ain't no way. Ain't no way. This don't make no sense. I feel like this is the conversation when you date certain. If you have a PhD, there are certain ways you have to engage in the world, and this ain't it. This ain't it. Like, I would be so frustrated having trading. Imagine, imagine having to explain everything that you just, after being exposed to the formal education landscape, after doing that kind of work, there are things that you're going to say that are kind of second nature, like, a scientific fact or um, if you're studying philosophy, you are going to say certain things and it is mentally exhausting to break every single thing down for people who will fight you all the way, particularly when their ego is involved. I'm not about to do that. I am not about to do that. I'm not about to do that. 
You're not about to sit over there and call me uppity elitist. I'm not going through that kind of... No, I'm not doing that. I'm not telling y'all not to do that. I'm not doing that. This conversation is what is killing my... It is killing mine, too. I'm so... <laughs> Sir, you are not her peer, so your opinion is irrelevant. You are not the peer reviewing this. I feel dumb, and my fall semester starts on Monday. Maybe I should Google it. Period. I didn't even know that they would stay on her this long. It, look, do not, do not do this. Do not do this. Don't be her. <laughs> Don't be her. Give an inch, they take a mile, girl. But people who are looking to humble you will take any opportunity to do so. And this is an attempt at humbling her. This is an attempt. When that man literally sits up there and says, that's the problem with educated people, you've been wanting to say that. You've been, been wanting to say that in the words of Sinji. Hey, we're gonna get real in this. I'm just playing. Yeah, I know. It's never you must playing because you didn't even let me talk. Either. Well, because when you say you know you're killing our brain cells, you can't kill our brain cells by those. I said the priest is still cells. stuck on the kill. Look, and I said decrease. You put Q. Okay, you didn't say decrease. You you didn't say decrease. You said kill. But if you didn't say kill and you said decrease, can you explain this to me? It. Y'all stop hyping Themis and his glowing skin up. He's trying to kill your remaining brains. Period. This is the true downside of women dating. Do yeah. This perfectly, in my mind, I don't know if it's true, this perfectly exemplifies the problem, I think, with not dating at your academic level. I think this ex exemplifies it. And the person you're dating is not humbling, humbling themselves down enough humbling themselves enough to figure out what things mean and how to engage. Okay, this is not right. This is not right. Hey, look, hold on, hold on. She's trying to catch you in a trick bag. People, understand. <laughs> I don't care how much it was peer-reviewed and a million peer... It's still an agreement. The world works on agreements. We call... All, this is a laptop because we agreed to call it a laptop. It easily could have been called a tree. And it would have been called a tree if we all agreed to it. Money is valued what is valued because we agree. It costs more money to make the material of a penny than it does a $100 bill. But we agree that the hundred dollar bill is worth more than the copper penny. This is paper, this is copper. Basically, we agree, so it's right, currency. but based on agreements, we agree. Right. So that's what makes it a fact. So just because it was peer reviewed in a book, a fact, in a school right? system, it doesn't make it a fact. And if you find information outside of a book, outside of uh, the source of education, your brain. There are sources that are more authoritative than others. Her peer review work would be more authoritative than a random article online with a no-name citation. What do you mean? It can still be a fact. It can still be true. It doesn't have to come from schools. All I'm saying, don't limit yourself to the box of it it is like research comes from school. brain matter, like researching the brain and how visually, like the brain changes based on the things you're exposed to, the certain things that light up, the certain things like how when you are ingesting the drugs, how certain things die, actually physically die. You but are you, color. are you, are you so, in there doing that brain work? Are I would you, love to. There's no, no you're someone else. else. The credibility it, of other MDs, yeah. It doesn't matter though. You're not, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know this for a fact. Like, you you still, know no, you know what somebody's taught you. Listen, no. I made the mistake of telling someone they were right and I was wrong once, and it was someone who. I did it because I this person was always comparing themselves to me and I wanted to like give them a boost. And it was not in a private setting. There were people around. I can't really talk about where and how because people who know me will know who I'm talking about. And I remember just like feeling so annoyed because it was so public that I did it. And the person responded to me in the most condescending way ever. And when I said I lit... <laughs> when I said I lit him up... Oh, I said him. I didn't want to put a gender on it. When I said it, it was not pretty. 
It was not pretty. Never again. And I felt bad afterwards. I felt really, really bad because the reason I did it was to help him with his self-esteem because I knew he was comparing himself to me. And I wanted him to feel like he had a win. But when I said he took it, and this is why this triggers me so much, by the way. When I said he took it to a place where he almost called me dumb, when I said he did that and everyone in the room knew he was wrong and everyone in the room also knew that I just kind of acquiesced in that moment because I didn't want to cause a scene. When I said I lit him up, we till this day, we're not friends. And I know it was because of that. Till this very day, we're not friends. I'm not about to do that ever again. Absolutely, I'm not. If you're not smart enough to do it, you're not smart enough to do it. The spirit of drag came in, I drug, and then I left. I got my exorcism and I left. <laughs> Woo! I exorcised that demon. Gravity is fake. I Google it. Period. I took it back in a minute. I not only took it back, I took it back and I told this person, him, I keep, I told this person, I told him that the reason I gave it, gave it to him was because he looked like he needed something to hold on to. So I was just giving him a life jacket so he could swim. But since he wanted to be, <laughs> ah! Governor, <that> is... <laughs> This is so wrong. This is so wrong. This has bothered me for so long, and I'm laughing at it now, but it has bothered me because I, I had no reason to do that. I could have... I No, I couldn't have taken it. I'm no one's beating post. Absolutely, I'm no one's beating... Yeah, I definitely... Yes. I told him... The only reason I said you were right is because I wanted to help you out. But since you want to be a loud mouth and talk and talk, you were wrong. Here is why you were wrong. You need to look this up. You don't know anything about the law. This is why you probably failed contracts. And <laughs> okay, we were talking about the contracts exam. And I told this man, I see what he was saying. And this man took me saying, I see what he was saying after wanting to end the conversation and give him a, a, a feel-good moment. He took that to a girl. When I said I dragged him and told him he probably failed that contracts exam, he never again, ever again spoke to me. And I was fine with that. Intellectual woman trapped in lemurance or on period. Yes, lemurance. I love that for you, Afro butterfly. Come through. God, I was loud too. So I was just as loud as he was. So everyone could hear me. The way that everyone could hear him, everyone could hear me too. And X once tried to call me uppity because I told him, you don't know the meaning of the word you are using, which is why you don't make sense. I'm in a doctoral program for literature. Never again. Never again. Absolutely. Thank you, Fearest. The only, reason I'm, the only reason I'm going over this is because I don't like when people what? discredit other people's research or what they've learned through their experiences or what they study because you may not have studied it does not make it incorrect. But you cannot, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. false information. Hold on, hold on. We're not giving false information. We're not, you're killing off sales. We're not giving false information. So you can't decrease it. So your sales can't decrease? They can, but not by what you said. Why, why not? You only enhance. You were, you were talking about an element of if I keep doing the same thing, if I keep, you know, talking about, you know, exposing myself to the same Look, thing. Don't fall for it. She, hold on, don't nah, fall for it. She's trying to get you in a trick bag with the kill. Does she keep falling back to the kill and we already agree? No, we already agree. He did not mean literally. No, but he said what he said. Right, but we already agree. You smarter every day. I said the brain decreases. She tried to catch you in a trick bag. Don't fall for it. That's the chaos of the feminine. I know how to do it. It's cool. She trying to catch him in the trick bag because she keep going back to the kill. That's the chaos of a doctor. Not yeah. feminine. But you, okay, look, she even used surgery as an example. We were, our ancestors were doing brain surgery <laughs> with no fucking anesthesia, no nothing. This is on film before school. So just because it was in school Google peer review. does not mean it's not a fact. I'm going to just say that. <laughs> she yeah. caught in the matrix. Yeah, 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 she, yeah, she, 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 she Yeah, I know. She, <laughs> okay, look, let, let's move along. Let's move along. She thought she had you, but you know. I know, I know. I thought I did. She thought she had you. Okay, yeah. answer me this because I want to know, know this. Mm. Men, when we earn money, it's with the thought of giving. So like. Like you get it, like your husband, he goes, earns a lot of money. It's with the thought of my wife, my kids, my family. Right. Women earn a lot of money. It's with the thought of now I can replace this man. I don't need him. They don't have the same. Like, where does that come from? Because you study brains and, and things like that. So I want to know that where you're studying. That comes, that comes from where you are, how you're raised. That's not how I think about it. I, I've always been the breadwinner in our relationship, the primary. Anyway. Ain't no way. Ain't no way you're going to sit up here and say you were always the breadwinner in your relationship. 
there is there when I like this. I'm walking off the screen. I'm literally walking off the screen because the girl, I could have told you that in the beginning, but like when when people say submissive provider, I was being nice, but we knew. We I'll be back. I'm not doing anything, by the way. I'm only walking away for dramatic effects. I am literally not doing anything, but I do have to walk away and come back to pretend like I didn't know this and just like, oh my God, you are the breadwinner. Who would have thought? All right, I'm back. Men, oh, I did write it. Men, natural men are natural protectors. They want to provide. She then says, "I'm a helpmate. I build him up. I'm a helpmate. I submit to my man." But you are the provider, though. But you are the provider, though. All right. See you guys next week. It's absolutely not. Ain't no way. This, uh, absolutely not. No, I didn't take a bite of oxtail. I'm just sitting here confused. He, he was sitting here, I said as well. Um, he recently, because of his change in, in what he does, now he is. But I've been trying to get him to be the motherfucking breadwinner for a long time, but he wasn't there mentally. So, no, that comes from, I, I come from a single mother from Mississippi. Okay, so she built him up and now he's the breadwinner. All right, well, on that note, on that really dusty note, let me move that. Um, we're an hour and 18 minutes in. We probably won't be watching this. Not about to watch the rest of this, I don't think. Demis, please remember that she also said she never met a man she was unable to submit to. So she was out there submitting to, to, to her non-breadwinner of it, period. So everyone, is, this is the problem I don't understand. People keep using the Bible and saying, oh my God, I sub women should submit, but the men should be able to provide based on the Bible. So I don't understand why you would use the Bible to justify how you are submitting to the man, but not justify about him being an infidel if he can't provide. Like, I, I, I but what? All right, period. Um, uh, everyone, I do have to go. I'm like an hour over, so you all were right about what I was going to do, and I was wrong about what I was going to do. Because I can vet these men, but I can't vet myself, because I definitely knew they were about to drag her for no reason. So let's go into this after show and um, end, because I am annoyed. about you as provide you've been the pro <sighs> please remember to like this video i really appreciate it it helps the algorithm a lot and um apparently i have haters i don't <laughs> apparently i have haters who write me love notes so if you like the stream more people get to hate so please remember to like the stream thank you thank you Please, um, I would like to see 700 likes. Um, that would be great. Uh, separately, I'm having the, the next debate on Sunday. I think it's at 4 o'clock. Um, I will post it, the, link to, to, the link tomorrow. The debate will be whether or not marriage is good for black women. <laughs> Wake Up Makeup Slay called it. We got four hours. No, you got three hours and 50 minutes. It's not going to be four hours, so she will be wrong. She will be wrong because I'm going to end before it hits the four-hour mark, and that's on par. Um, hey, um, mm -mm, mm -mm. did you guys listen to um, Sweetie's birth, uh, birth? <laughs> if you haven't listened to Sweetie's birthday, please don't listen to it. If you have not listened to Holly. Angel, please go and listen to Angel, because that is that girl. Y'all need to run the, those streams up. Y'all need to run those, I don't know what you call it. I don't know where music is. But listen to her. 
um, think about it. Go to Doctor Sebi if you need if you need surgery. Oh, is it? Didn't he pass? Anywho, um, someone said in conclusion, Doctor Sebi took Batman out of the home. Uh, I appreciate you all. Theme is, you know, we didn't listen to her, girl. <laughs> Uh, hello. Okay, Themis, you won. <laughs> I acquiesce. Thank you for liking the stream. Please, please, please come through on Sunday. Um, it would be nice. I do actually want um the debaters to um feel comfortable and see that you all support the other people who are in the community with you. Um, they didn't choose their side. Their sides were assigned, so don't hold that against them. Uh, at the end of round one, we are going to be, um, you guys will choose who you think is the best debater and they will be given a prize at the end of round one. Um, I decided also that I will not announce the winner of each debate um, at the end. I think at the end of the entirety of the, the round one, for where everyone goes, then I'll announce and give them their scores. So that's that's very important to me. Um, I think AJ, uh, well, let me not say. There's a, there are people who are going to be debating. I will put the link up tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I said, I thought the scientific methods to Batman out of the whole, that and everything else. <laughs> What will the debate will they debate? They will debate whether or not marriage is beneficial for black women. So one person is saying marriage is beneficial for black women, the other person is saying marriage is detrimental to black women, and they will go at it in a fight to the de- the victory. All right. I'm going to end it now. I hate leaving y'all. I feel like I'm losing. What the did she say Sarah? Someone said, who said this in the chat? Sarah spelled S-A-R-A-H. And then they spelled Tonin. And they said serotonin. So, <laughs> so my serotonin goes down <laughs> when it goes down when I leave. I don't want to leave. Um, when are we getting a stream about the aliens? Girl, when they take me from this dusty planet. <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> did I tell you that there was some there, there was some ghost in my house? I was upstairs sleeping and I heard doors downstairs close. No, 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 no. That's not true. I was downstairs on the couch as I fell asleep watching Ben 10 or Charmed. I was watching Charmed. That's probably why. I probably made this up. And I thought I was still asleep. No joke. This is not even a joke. I thought I was still asleep, but I could see myself laying on the couch and I could see the entirety of my living room. And there was this like, I was uh, like, I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to say red. It was this red ball just bouncing. The issue, It was just bouncing all over. And it, it didn't feel good. Like it just felt evil and bad. And I was like, whatever. And literally I woke up, like, I don't know what happened. I just woke up. And when I looked around, it was dark. And the only thing light was from the TV. And I was like, wait, I literally thought there was lights on or whatever. And I don't know what happened, but it was raining outside. (laughs) And this is how you know I'm an adult adult. This is how you know I'm an adult adult. Because as a child, I would be so scared. I literally heard the door move and the way I got up, I didn't even, I, I got up, go get some water, looked where the door moved, dragged my water, walked upstairs, turned off all the lights in the house and went to bed. <laughs> just went, <laughs> just, I just went to bed. I was like, girl, if it's my time, it's my time. I'm not about to sit here and cry and, and care. I, 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 I don't care. And so I just went to bed, woke up and it was fine. <laughs> But I can only remember, as a child, I would be so scared. But I've I've had that happen, like, before when I was a child. I don't remember it specifically. But I've never, like, really looked at myself while I was, I don't know, dreaming. Like, I've never been dreaming and saw myself in my dream lying there. Like, I was sleeping and I could see myself sleeping. 
That's some foolishness. In any case, <laughs> someone said Kevin Samuels is on the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I don't get him. I'm afraid of ghosts. Call me Ghostbusters. Someone said my third eye is opening. That's why I can see through the, fo- the foolishness. All right, I, I'm not about to hit. I, y'all thought I was really about to hit the four-hour mark, but I'm not. I'm going to literally stop it at 3.58. It's at almost there. It, I have a couple seconds. Yep, and now it's at 3.58. Have a wonderful night. Please stop sending ghosts my way. They're not friendly. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I rebuke all of that. All right, bye.